note observation off no forget it it was going to be a personal comment so now we're live we're live <laughs> We are ready to go. Good evening. Bonsoir. Bienvenue à notre réunion conseil. Welcome to our council meeting. Are there any declaration of pecuniary interest? Aucune déclaration d'intérêt pecuniaire? None. Are there volunteers as a mover and a seconder for the agenda? Conseil Yvon, Conseil Léo. It is moved by Councillor Zuhain and seconded by Councillor Mellet. We have resolved that the agenda for the meeting of Council held on March the 16th, 2021, be adopted as presented. Any objections? Hello, est-ce que vous m'attendez? Oui, on t'entend, Conseil Alice. Moi, je vous attends pas. Okay, tu dois avoir un problème technique. Je vous attends pas. Est-ce que les autres euh, entendent? Je vois un signe de tête. Je vois plus un signe de tête. Lise, m'attends-tu? Probablement, c'est son volume sur son iPad ou son, son ordinateur. Je ne vous attends pas. On t'entend, toi, par exemple. Fais attention, qu'est-ce que tu dis? Parce qu'on t'entend. Just going to wait one minute to see if that technical problem is going to be resolved. Looking forward to the day where we can resume in person. May not be for quite a while still. Bon, est-ce que tu peux nous entendre, Conseil Lise? Conseil Alice, est-ce que tu nous entends? Dans l'intervalle, Conseil Alice, tu veux essayer de te joindre par téléphone? On t'entend. OK, donc, um, Conseil Alice, elle ne nous entend pas. Um, je ne sais pas s'il y a quelqu'un qui peut um, envoyer par courriel le numéro Hello. de téléphone. Conseil Alice, on t'entend. Um, Est-ce que quelqu'un peut envoyer le numéro de téléphone à Conseil Alice pour qu'elle puisse se joindre par l'entremise de téléphone? Est-ce que vous m'attendez? Oui. Moi, je ne vous attends pas. Va faire tu elle par téléphone. Ben, écoute, euh, je ne peux pas faire des miracles. Oui. Ouais. OK. Uh, Conseil Lise, um, téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Mm. Oui, va falloir que tu te joignes à la réunion par téléphone. Il va falloir que je retourne d'abord pour essayer de me connecter sur mon téléphone. Oui. Oui.
not exist. Please re-enter your meeting ID, followed by pound. Enter your participant ID, followed by pound. Otherwise, just press pound. Please enter the meeting passcode, followed by pound. <coughs> Okay. I think you'll have to put your phone on mute, Dad, Consalis. No, no, no. Okay, no, no. no, no. Ça fonctionne pas le Zoom. Okay. Et de faire la réunion par téléphone. Ou mettre ton téléphone sur mute. Ben, je ben, l'ai mis sur mute, mute, là. Non, mais peut-être que tu mettras ton iPad sur mute. Pardon? Essaye de mettre le iPad sur mute. Le iPad de... Oh. Je comprends pas. Je comprends pas. Tu peux pas avoir les deux. C'est quoi que vous voulez je ferme, là? Non, 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 non. Bon. Tu es encore là, qu'on s'alise par téléphone? Me comprenez-vous? Oui, okay. OK, c'est bon. So, ça veut dire que tu es par l'entremise de téléphone. Oui, mais l'entremise de téléphone, ben, ça ne fait pas mon affaire. Est-ce que je peux me rejoindre avec toi à l'hôtel de ville, là, moi, mon masque? Euh, oui, il faut que tu apportes ton masque. Puis, euh, oui. Parce qu'on est que... prêt à procéder la réunion, parce que comme ben, c'est... Ben, vas-y, parce que moi, je ne peux pas fonctionner de même, là, de ne pas voir ce qui se passe. Là. Soit que je m'en aller à l'hôtel de ville, ou bien donc, euh, je vais voir la semaine prochaine. Je ne sais pas plus bien que ça. Bon, bien, tu as le choix de venir à l'hôtel de ville, qu'on OK, j'y vois là. OK. Donc, euh, on a eu euh, la motion qui a été lue. Donc, euh, est-ce qu'il n'y a aucune objection? Any objection pertaining to the resolution for the agenda? I believe there was none. Aucune. Donc, adopté, carried. On procède avec comité with committees. Le premier comité à l'ordre du jour, c'est planification, planning, and I'm going to pass it on to the chair, Conseiller Denis. Okay. Merci, uh, Madame la mairesse. Uh, we have uh, only one item for uh, planning, and it uh, was brought up by me to put on the agenda because I'd like to know when the um, the trailer parks uh, information or bylaw will come back to the planning board so that we can have our public meetings. That's all I want to know. That's a Melanie question. Mel? Um, through you, Madam Chair, uh, I'll be quite <clears throat> frank, uh, Mr. Chair. It has been a little bit crazy in here and I just haven't had the opportunity to get to it. I got a bit of a staffing problem right now, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to get to it shortly and uh, bring something back to the planning board uh, for the April meeting. That's, thank you for that information, Melanie. That's all I needed. And that uh, that uh, shuts down my, uh, my uh, planning. So we'll move on back to the mayor. Well, that was quick. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. We proceed with the next committee, Emergency Measures and Public Safety, Mesure d'Urgence et Sécurité Publique, and I'll pass it on to the Chair, Councillor Chris. Okay, well, that's a lot. Public uh, safety, uh, there's a concern, uh, at least, at least uh, by Ottawa Street, 
Um, I believe, and you can correct me if we're wrong, we tentatively we approved that sidewalk a, a couple of days ago, maybe it's not finalized, but tentatively. Um, and there is a call for a temporary solution uh, to make uh, a one-way street. Um, my personal in inclination would be to send this to uh, Public Works for uh, a recommendation, uh, what we can do there, if that makes sense. Um, and uh, I will open it to the floor, or maybe I'll go around, uh, Councillor Duhin. Thank you, Councillor Chris. Uh, uh, if you don't mind, uh, I noticed that uh, Sean is on the, uh, on the line with us. And I thought maybe if we can have him say something about it, uh, if it's, if that's at all possible, if Sean's willing to attack it this evening, would that be okay, Mr. Chair? Certainly sounds perfect. Sean, you Sean, have the floor. Thank you uh, through you, Mr. Chair. So I did read uh, the, the memorandum and, and you know, as, as much as I appreciate um, uh, the public uh, providing input on solutions uh, on, on this case, I, I would, be cautious on on uh, you know implementing or or amending our bylaw to have Lisgar Street to uh, into a one way between Ottawa and I believe Dufferin. Um, the you know when when you look at at uh, traffic and Ontario traffic manual, they are really adamant on consistency. Um, you know this this could lead to driver confusion. Um, you know, it, it'll, it'll probably uh, be problematic to enforce uh, for, for a short period. So I would say, you know, let, let's stay the course. I have my marching orders. I'm going to get on an RFQ and, and let's get this sidewalk built. I don't think we want to get into uh, kind of knee-jerk reactions when, when we have, you know, because it, it could lead to confusion. But in the end, it, it is a council decision. Um, you know, that, that is, is my opinion, and uh, that's all I have, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Dehaene, did you want to follow up now that you've heard that? Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Council, uh, Chairman. Mr. Chairman, yeah, I agree with uh, somewhat with that, because the, the, there will be a lot of confusion involved, and it might be, be a worst-case scenario. It might, might get worse and somewhat, that people could uh, maybe cause more accidents than they want to. So I would prefer to uh, wait till uh, Sean gets into this, uh, getting this high, uh, sidewalk into place and, uh, and keep it as such right up to till then. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so um, I guess I, because Lee's on the phone, so I really should, or is Lee's on the phone? Um, so uh, Councillor Roland, anything? Councillor Larrabee? Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> yes, I, I think the idea of having a one way, uh, I don't think that would be constructive. It more, I, I, I'd imagine it'd be more destructive than anything else. So I, I'd say like Sean, leave it as, leave it the way it is for now, for, for Sean to, to bring the, uh, whatever needs to be brought forward on this subject. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Millet. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, uh, one way street when you do the snow bomb, I mean, that'd be problematic, I believe. So, no, leave it as is. I mean, Sean can respond to it. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Rovita. I agree with Sean. Um, I, I run in that area, and it, I don't know. I was trying to figure out how the heck that would work, and I think it would cause much more confusion because uh, buses, people trying to come back out and then turning left or turning right on Montreal, it would be confusing. So I agree with you, Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, I'll give, I, she's frozen at the moment, but Madam Mayor. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Maybe just a point of clarification, because when I was reading it, it had to do with the circulation from Lisker Street, um, starting from Ottawa Street. I believe that the sidewalk that council approved was from Lisker to Drive-In Road or Cash Bay Road and nothing with Ottawa Street. And I think here this request from the actual resident was identifying that due to the high circulation, probably due to COVID, was identifying a safety concern regarding the circulation from Lisker starting from Ottawa Street, but we are not planning any sidewalk 
in this budget from Ottawa to Lisker. Would that be correct? So the, the sidewalk, Madam Mayor, is uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the sidewalk that, that is proposed for Lisker Street starts at the school. So uh, at Genesis Active and, and goes all the way out to Cash Bay Road to meet up to the other uh, sidewalk on Cash Bay Road. So yeah, it's, it's for that entire stretch of road. But if I may, um, it has nothing to do from Le Chemin Ottawa au Chemin Lisker. Uh, Lis Lisker Street. So, so like, Ottawa, um, Ottawa intersects Lisger. I know it does, but if I'm reading this correctly, um, il s'agit de la circulation sur la rue Lisger à partir de la rue Ottawa. C'est ça. But Donc, mais elle, elle réfère à la rue Lisger elle-même. C'est parce que c'est parce que c'est c'est il y a beaucoup de trafic puis les enfants ont pas de trottoir à marcher donc ils, ils se portent à marcher sur le côté de la rue et puis là ça fait avec tout avec le trafic les autobus euh, les enfants sont sont portés à the, the kids are, are uh, prone to walk on, on the edge of road in, in winter months with the with the snow banks it's problematic right um, what what I would recommend for now is that uh, well the, the banks are, are probably down now, but I'll, I'll have staff drive it tomorrow. And if we can remove that bank at least so that the kids can walk on the shoulder and not have to stay on the road and, and off the bank. But the way I understood it, uh, Madam Mayor, is that the problem area is Lisgar Street, but she was referencing from the school to Ottawa Street. Um, but the sidewalk does include that area and up to Cash Bay Road. So from the school to Cash Bay Road on Lisgar. Okay. okay, okay, perfect. And if I may, um, will there be someone that will communicate with the affected resident regarding the correspondence that we got, that we received to inform uh, the resident that uh, we do have remedial um, pertaining to the sidewalk? And I, will, there... I can do that if, uh, I mean, if, yeah. Okay. The, uh, the clerk's department also, Janice usually sends out uh, some uh, uh, some letters uh, to close the loop on uh, those things. So Janice can do it as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, so uh, Councillor uh, Denis Senecal, anything? Uh, yes, I, well, I just agree with Sean that uh, we can look at it and maybe just move the snow banks for now and uh, see where we go from there. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Lee Seneca. No, I'm okay. I missed, uh, so it's okay. Okay, so I think uh, we, I think that one's done. We have general consensus. Uh, so moving right along, uh, we have the issue of, um, uh, sorry, I just got to find the day. Um, okay, so the, uh, it was a, this was an information only thing, I believe, that it was to do with the ingress and egress of the property due to uh, parking of a commercial vehicle. Um, it has been checked and uh, there is no, um, there's no breach of, of any bylaw. So uh, I guess I could quickly go around. Anything, uh, Council De Haim? Is Council De Haim frozen or is that just me? Nope. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's, it, it, it explains itself well here. And uh, and I agree with what's being said. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Councillor Larrabee. No problem with it. No problem. Councillor Millet. Same thing. Thank you. Councillor Ravita. No issue. Madam Mayor. No, it's clear. Councillor Seneca. Denny Seneca. No, it's good. Thank you. Councillor Lee Seneca. That's good. Okay, so thank you very much. I apologize for not being quite as quick as Dennis, but uh, this ends the uh, emergency measures and public safety uh, section of the meeting, and I will hand the chair back to the mayor. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. So we move on to um, economic development, development economic. And we have one item on the agenda, and that has to do Objective and priorities of the Economic Development Authority, the presentation that was done by 
the chair of the committee to council on February 16th. And based on the presentation, there were three objectives that had been outlined pertaining to housing, uh, marketing, the uniqueness of West Nipissing, and to foster investment in business-friendly uh, environment. So I guess based on the presentation that was done to Council, uh, the committee, the Economic Development uh, Authority Committee is seeking direction from Council if Council agrees with the priorities that were set and presented on February 16th, and also with the feedback that was shared pertaining to making sure in having a labor market study to make sure that we have the resources available for any new development that comes into West Nipissing. And also there was the comment of uh, affordable housing, well, should um, include all needs within the boundaries of West Nipissing, whether it's affordable, uh, whether it addresses uh, people that uh, require shelters, uh, address the issue of those that are doing couch surfing, and so on. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'll ask our director of uh, community services and at get to see if he's had if you have anything else to add, uh, Stefan. No, I think you've covered it all, Madam Mayor. I guess at this point, the committee is looking for uh, some uh, direction and endorsement of the plan that they've prepared uh, coming from council. So I guess that's where we're at with this now. So what I'll do is uh, a quick round table just to find out, you know, who supports the plan. And of course that plan um, is always subject, you know, to feedback provided by council members on local priorities. So what I'm going to do, Conseiller Yvon, do I, you? Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, uh, after looking at the plan, it's, uh, no, I, I don't have any problems with it. It just seems to be the same issues that we're dealing with every uh, in everyday life with respect to co small communities. But uh, I hope they're they're successful and I would uh, certainly back them. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Chris? Um, so yeah, I, I agree with the plan. I did have one question. Um, I, I was waiting. It's unfortunate that we haven't done this in budget yet. It's really, I could ask it there. But um, the one thing that I would like to see, and I know it's on the list, but sort of concrete rubber to the road is uh, it's been a number of years since we've had um, a, a tourism brochure put throughout the, the tourism places. And, uh, you know, I, I think we live in a, in a beautiful place and we should let people know that. And I just wonder if, if that's something for this year or if that's sort of the next year thing. I just think it's a shame that we don't advertise this better like that. Thank you. I really thank you for bringing that forward because definitely part of uh, the marketing campaign and promoting West Nipissing and the uniqueness of West Nipissing is um, developing that plan and coming back to council with uh, the recommendation of the marketing plan and also making sure that we don't miss out on anything. Thank you, Councillor Chris. Uh, duly noted and will be shared with the committee as well. Councillor Leo. rolling before me, I think, Madam Mayor. So, I know, but can you proceed and I'll go after with yeah. Councillor Rowley? Well, okay, Madam Mayor, yeah, we're, I'm, all, I'm all good with the, with the plan. Okay, okay. thank you. Councillor Rowley? Um, I'm okay with it at this time, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Dan? Uh, I'm all right with it. However, um, one of the things that I brought up when they did the presentation was that I I'm firmly believe that there has to be a, a labor force analysis for West Nipissing, uh, determining the skill sets we have in our community. Because my experience, and I have a lot of experience in that, is that for the first question an employer will ask, a potential employer will say, what kind of labor force do you have? What kind of skill sets do you have? What are your average salaries? Blah, blah, blah. I think it's vital that that has to be put, to, and I had mentioned that when they did the presentation. So I think it's important that that, that be part of it. Uh, and the second question that they'll ask, and that again, that's from my experience, is that uh, what kind of wage subsidies exist uh, that uh, we could tap into, whether they're provincial or federal. And that is another important thing, because I think that's vital if we're gonna try to attract new business to the community, 
we have to know, you know, what kind of, what can we offer to employers in as much as the skills, you know, and just as an example, we have a great bilingual force. Uh, some of the other things are skill sets that uh, an employer will ask. So that's the only thing Regar uh, regarding the other part of it. Totally agree. It's a good, good start. Okay. Thank you. And then Kosi Denis. Uh, I have no issues with the plan. I think it's a good plan and we'll let them get started and then we can revisit it. So I'm good. Thank you, Conseil Lise. Well, uh, pertaining to uh, Conseil uh, Dan, uh, it's uh, duly noted and uh, it, is, it has been brought up, obviously, the two main important, uh, you can have uh, a thousand uh, people that can be hired on one industry. First of all, we need housing and then we need the labor force to be able to do that. And we need the expertise depending what's gonna be brought up. So it's definitely gonna be part of the study that's gonna be done. And so um, I think it's it's a good tool to start and I, I think it was well done. It's, uh, we're lucky to have volunteers that have a lot of experience sitting around the table and uh, that offer the expertise to put it down on paper. So. I think uh, at this point of time, a special thanks to go to Carol Lafreniere that, uh, that really did a lot of work on that and the rest of the committee member. Thank you. Okay, so Conseil Verley. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, also, I would like to uh, add that uh, uh, I think the uh, committee should have, uh, should have, have received uh, the letters that I did receive and you also, Madam Mayor, at our delegation for MTO. Uh, this is really economic development. There are the, the businesses in the local area uh, need all the support they can get to better our roads in this area here, as, as you uh, advocated for the, at the, our delegation for MTO. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Okay. So I want to say thank you. Uh, I think it's duly noted, uh, our Director of Community Services and ACDEV and uh, the next meeting, uh, the committee is going to be updated, um, and I'm confident that they'll appreciate the support, and we'll deal with uh, the budget issue for EGDEV uh, at a budget meeting. And um, as the committee moves forward with initiatives, uh, the plan is also to make sure that council is kept informed and as much as possible consultation with uh, our residents in the community. Thank you. So the next uh, committee is community services, service Kaminota. The issue is uh, regarding the lease renewal for the West Nipissing Scouts. This information was shared this afternoon and I'll pass it on to our Director of Community Services and ECDEV. Stefan, if you want to walk us through the, uh, the proposed uh, lease agreement. So, um... Thank you, Madam Mayor. At this time, we, we don't have a proposed lease agreement. What we're looking at is a council direction pertaining to a lease agreement moving forward. So I'll, I'll provide a bit of history. I know uh, the memo came in uh, late today, so I'll just walk you through. So uh, back in uh, um, 2018, a 20-year lease agreement that was uh, signed between the Township of Caldwell and at that time, an organization called Les Scouts de la Deuxième Saint-Jean-Baptiste de Vernon. It was a 20-year agreement. It was like a $1 a year uh, lease agreement. And uh, it was to, be, to utilize a building that the municipality owns uh, now through amalgamation located on Highway 575. So um, the Vernon Scouts made their home at that location. Um, and then the... Uh, uh, the, uh, there's, there's a lot of, uh, I guess, changes made to the Werner Scouts organizations. They no longer, uh, that chapter no longer exists as, a, as that entity did in the past. It's evolved and they're now uh, called the uh, West Nipsing Scouts Association. Uh, there's new people on the committee. There's, they've seen a, a whole revamp. Um, that came to my attention uh, just a couple of years back, uh, I personally, we, we, we looked into it. We weren't even sure uh, the size of that property, but we managed to find the uh, original lease agreement, uh, which you have a copy of. And so we kind of 
uh, did some work on that. And, and lo and behold, we there is a, a structure, a two-story building, 1,500 square feet approximately, that the, the scouts organizations have basically, basically maintained over the last 20 years. It's on our property. There's a, I believe it's a seven, eight or 13 acre a piece of land located right off the 575. They've actually done a really good job maintaining that building. Um, they've done some upgrades. Uh, we did send uh, staff to actually do a full inspection of the building to make sure because the, the, the new committee were requesting uh, a lease extension. So once, once we got hold of the information that that building was there, the property was ours, we had a closer look at it. Um, there are some uh, improvements that or repairs that need to occur to ensure that uh, the building remains within the, uh, the building code for that particular type of use. Um, the local, the new committee, uh, there seems to be a lot of energy. Uh, they're willing to apply for funding to do some, some of the work required. They want to do some improvements to the building. Um, so we've, there's been a lot of back and forth on this because before coming to council, we wanted to make sure who we're dealing with. So as I explained in the, um, in the memo, there's a local group looking after the West Nipissing chapter of the Scouts. They, they service uh, 30 odd uh, children aged seven to 17. They have activities and, and everything that goes along with that. They belong to a greater association. I believe they're, they're called the, uh, uh, and I think I've got in my memo, the Sudbury District Scouts Association. And that association represents the Sudbury District chapter. And all of these scout organizations belong to uh, the Scouts Canada. So now we're, we're trying to, to, to do a bit more work into who's the legal entity that the municipality would be entering a lease agreement with. That I think we can, we can resolve to make sure that, you know, we have uh, directors and officers and there's a legal entity that we're entering into a lease agreement with. And then we could work out the details of the lease agreement once we've sorted that out and come back to council with a full detailed lease agreement for council's review and approval. So those are the natural next steps if council provides us with that direction. I uh, provided two options. Um, obviously, there, there could potentially be more, but for council's consideration, I provided two options on the memo. I know council has been discussing um, often over the last little while uh, pertaining to land that the municipality owns, facilities and buildings that the municipality owns, and eventually we'll have a review of all of our existing facilities and determine which buildings and properties the municipality wishes to dispose of and those that municipality wishes to keep. So I think there's a lot of discussion and dialogue that council is going to have over the next coming months. So one option we're recommending is to enter into a short-term lease agreement with the local club and look at a basically a month-to-month -month lease similar to what we've done with the West Nipsing Chamber of Commerce in our information center. We didn't want to enter, enter into a long-term lease because Council will exactly make those types of decisions on that building moving forward. Um, this will allow Council an opportunity to complete a review of municipal buildings and land to provide strategic direction regarding properties assets moving forward. Second uh, option for Council's consideration, Council could so wish to enter into a long-term lease agreement. We would recommend uh, no more than a five-year plus a five-year renewal option, but we would also recommend that in the lease agreement, that we do have an out clause uh, should the municipality wish to dispose of the asset at a future time. So those are the two options that I provided the council for consideration. Okay. And that's what you're looking for direction this evening. If it's going to be a one year lease or looking at the uh, mid to long term lease agreement of five years. Just a quick question, Stefan, before doing a round table. Um, did the group identify any preference or do they feel that they'd be vulnerable if the lease would only be one year? Because I think, uh, I don't think it's council's wish um, for them to uh, feel jeopardized in any shape or your form if it would be a one year lease. I, uh, Madam Mayor, I haven't discussed the terms of the contract. I, I felt that uh, of the lease, okay. I felt that I, I should bring this forth to council. So I'll just caution one thing. Generally, when you get funding from the federal or provincial government to do leasehold improvements or repairs or any work required in the building, they will request to see, especially if the organization does not own the building, that 
in order for them, to, the government to invest money into a facility, they want to make sure that there'll be a, a longstanding lease agreement so that, that at least that investment is protected. That okay. the government doesn't show up in a private building, for example, put money and then the private sector turns around, they sell that building after it's been renovated or whatnot. So they would risk potentially not getting funding this year if we would only have a short-term lease agreement. Okay. Um, but that being said, we feel that the building is such is in really good condition. There might be limitations, however, but they could still continue to use that building for their purposes for at least another year. Okay. Okay. So those are the two options. I'll do a round table to see what's uh, the opinion and uh, the decision of uh, council members. Conseil Yvonne? Well, thank you, Madam Edis. While Steph was talking, uh, he mentioned the word uh, they're enthusiastic and they're, they're willing to do things, they're working hard, they're keeping it up. Uh, they want to apply, they want to do everything truly possible to see this work. And that is the key words that make me or get me interested. Um, if, if they're, you know, I, I just talk for our children to do. I think uh, they've it, it always proven themselves as being a good club. Uh, I, I would support them 100%, whether it means to give them a lease for five years, as Steph had mentioned, with the option of others. Uh, I, I strongly support people that are willing to work for the, work hard for their, for their cause. So I, Madame Meres, would suggest that uh, we do allow them to a, a five-year lease with options for further uh, and uh, with the conditions, as he had mentioned. But I think we should work hard and, and, and advocating uh, t things for kids to do uh, and uh, help the parents uh, work with the kids in order to, to keep them off the streets and show them the right thing in life. So I, I would support. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Conseil Bon. Conseil Chris. Um, I, I do have some comments, but I just, if you'd indulge me, I'd just like to ask a question for us. So the lease is basically uh, we're leasing it to a dollar and they look after it. Uh, I, is that revenue neutral to us? Does the municipality pay the heat and the hydro and all those other things, or or is it's it's off the books and and it's revenue neutral? Yeah, just... it is revenue neutral, Councillor. Um, they they have been doing a great job at fundraising and 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 paying heat and hydro and insuring the property uh, for their use. And uh, um, to date, we haven't seen. Uh, any, any uh, invoices come through. Um, yeah, so, so they, they've done a very good job at uh, maintaining and also paying the day-to-day uh, -day operations. Okay, so fabulous, fantastic. So I will say I've been to this building a few times. My uh, son was in the Scouts before he lost his mind to hockey. Um, the building, it's, it's very set up for the Scouts. It's, it's sort of purpose-built now, you would say. Um, they do use the uh, acreage back there. They do their little uh, adventures and fires and, and outdoor skills and all that stuff. Um, it's a, it's a, it is a good experience for kids. That particular building in that spot, it's not exactly waterfront and, and it, it's not going to be a big windfall to the uh, municipality. So I would uh, maintain the status quo and and uh, to my mind, it, it doesn't really matter too much. It, it's not, it's not going to affect our books in any material way, I wouldn't say. So I would give the scouts what they want. Thank you. Conseil Broly. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Well, I, <clears throat> again, uh, Steph, uh, thank you. Very well presented professional uh, uh, the way of doing it really enjoyed it um, as far as the clause if if like you say if we have a bailout clause in it the length of time that we do uh, put the the disagreement with them would really be uh, 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 you know it, it, it is a no issue for one year or five years if something comes up that we decide to bail out then we just bail out. But the thing is, is where would we be sitting if they do go get grants uh, for that building, if ever we decide to bail out uh, in half term? Um, My question would be to you, Steph, yeah. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, are you, if I'm understanding you correctly, Councillor uh, Rowley, um, 
are you asking what would happen to the grant money if we were to sell a facility? Yeah, so who would be responsible then if they were if the if the government was to to put some money into that building uh, through the scouts and then in a year or two we decide to 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 sell it. So my my experience with with granting programs is is once the government commits generally unless it's providing money that are private sector they generally will not require money back. They could provide that type of provision but that would be a condition of the grant from the the onset. We would know about that. Um, my my uh, experience again would be to, to think that unless they've got a minimum five to 10 year lease agreement, um, funding programs will generally not invest unless they have a longer term lease agreement. Um, so uh, again, I, it probably is not answering the question as specifically as you'd like, but- Well, it kind of does, yeah. Yeah, in okay. my opinion, if they would receive grant money, we would put the money, they would put the money in the building. And then let's say in three years, we decide to offer the building to the scouts or put it on the market, then um, my thought is I don't think that the government agencies would come back on the scouts to get that money back. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, in that case, like I, I support the scouts, uh, uh, always did, and uh, also my sons were in the, the scouts at one time, and so yes, I don't have any problem for for their request. Thank you. Madam Mayor, I think you might be on mute, Madam Mayor. <laughs> I will. Okay, Jose Roley, one year lease or a five year lease? That's the direction we need to give uh, to our director of community services. Oh, if you know, for safety, let's put it one year and but uh, renewable, no problem. Thank you. Okay, one year. Jose Leo. Yes, so the same thing, Madam Mayor. And uh, whatever, uh, I know that Stefan will come back to council with with, uh, with options and then, you okay. know, whatever. And, and long term, uh, I agree with the long term. Okay, so you agree with the long term? Yeah. Okay. I, I, Pardon? I said there would be a recommendation for five years. I'm okay. Okay, okay, thank you. Kosi Dan? Oh, yeah, okay, I'm on, not on mute. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I, I tend to agree with uh, the explanation. Well, I do totally agree with the explanation that Stefan provided us. Um, you're right about the grants, uh, being a person that was in that business too, uh, you know that uh, I know I'll just support what uh, staff said. When there's no long-term grant, no long-term leases, then they don't, uh, they don't come. It, that's just, that's just reality. So I, I would uh, suggest that you do, you know, five years and then, uh, but we build in the options if need be that if we decide to sell it, that we can get out. But the, one of the questions I want to ask Steph is in regards to insurance, uh, they're, they're covered by the, uh, you know, the, the, the umbrella of scouts, but if the proper name is not there, there's liability issues. And, and uh, yeah, if I may, Madam Mayor, through you, uh, that's, that's correct. And that's why we need to uh, really, uh, before we, we come back with the lease agreement, we have to figure out which legal entity. So it, it could potentially be that we have a lease agreement with the Nipissing District because they are legal entity or the Sudbury District, the Scouts. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that in turn, they would sublease it to our local group. But every group would have to provide certain level of insurance on their operation and, and how they use the facility. We as a municipality still make sure that our property is insured, but they mm -hmm. have to do insurance and add the municipality as an additional insured. That's right. Good. Thanks, Steph. Good explanation. Jose Denis. Jose Alice. Uh, well, I obviously I support uh, the, the scout. It's it's clear it's a good program for youth and it's been there forever. And uh, I think that's one that lasted the longer because I remember scout when I was young. So it's been a while. It'll be around. So I do support five year to give them a little bit of stability. And uh, but um, Stefan, when you're talking about uh, 
like is there a facility um, uh, inventory i guess uh, is that building uh, so that building got to be included in that so do you think it can be done within a year because if we go a year it would be too fast or too soon and uh, so that's why i would i would prefer a, a five year lease for sure but uh, do you expect that you have you will have that report uh, within uh, i don't know like uh, tell me when do you think you will can Oh. I, I think I think that we have to come back to council for a, oh, at least yeah. approval in the short term. So I think that should happen fairly quickly because they need that lease in place to be able to apply for funding. I think funding programs are, are currently open right now. So timing is of essence uh, to at least get the lease uh, signed and agreed to by both parties. Once that that's done and they apply for funding. I'm sure that, you know, by mid September or mid uh, summer, they should get answers on their grants. And if they do, then, then they'll work with our building department and our, our project, uh, uh, project manager to get the work completed. And then it's a matter of just uh, getting the work done. Okay, so I was for the five year, uh, five year lease. Also. Okay, thank you. Cosi, Denis, I know that your uh, laptop or computer was frozen. Now you're back yep. on. I'm back <laughs> on my iPad. So uh, I do agree with the five year lease. And I don't see any problem with that. So okay. I'm in for that. Okay, I think that really summarizes and provides good direction to our Director of Community Services, Anek Dev. It'll be a long, I say, long term lease, five years. Uh, and with all the details that are requir required with their standard agreements, and at least it's going to give uh, opportunities to this wonderful group to be able to continue operating for the betterment of our youth. And at the same time, if there's opportunities for grants, to take advantage of it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Okay, the next committee is Public Works, and I'll pass it on to the Chair, Conseiller Yvon. Merci, Madame Mayoress. Thank you. Uh, we have one item on the agenda this evening, and that's a Nature's Trails Bridge. Uh, many of you have had the opportunity of reading what is before you now with respect to the history of uh, where we are, we're at with uh, the bridge. Uh, the estimate at one time, I think, it was 600000 Now, the total estimate would, be, would exceed $1.2 million to build. Now, uh, I, I'm going to ask Mr. Balbo if he would have anything to add to that, to that list, or no. Um, the, you know, that, just to point out that it was a council uh, decision to limit the uh, their uh, their investment to four hundred thousand, and that's when it was uh, slightly over six hundred, and that. Uh, Part of that difference, uh, probably instead, or Sean can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure he will. Uh, is because now, given uh, the uh, delays, we're looking at the deck as well. Would that be uh, part of the uh, increase, uh, Sean? And the different designs that were requested, but the deck uh, is now added, right? Correct. Yeah. So the, the yeah the new bridge deck that's in addition, and as well as the uh, the recommendation from the local residents in in keeping the bridge in ex existing area. Right, so it changed the uh, the scope and the design as well. So thank you, uh, Jay, and thank you. So obviously, the the there is a, a, a there is an increase with respect to keeping the bridge in this place. Uh, we've uh, we've tried to negotiate with the people there, and they obviously uh, uh, weren't willing to the to to negotiate at a reasonable price. Um, there's always a, and I hate doing this, but the land acquisition situation that we can go into uh, but uh, we're, we're definitely looking at a lot of money here not that they don't deserve it but I mean I think the, in essence uh, if we were to put a bridge in the NEIC, I'll you know what Denis I'll let you speak on that uh, on matter right now if you wish and seeing that you brought well, it up well thank you Mr. Chair uh, I just want to, uh, to let I guess everybody knows that there's uh, three tourist camps that are involved in this issue and there's about uh, 30 residents that are also involved. Some are part-time or seasonal and others are permanent. And there is uh, probably around 45 jobs at stake. So, uh, uh, you know, it's a serious, uh, serious issue that 
I don't see why council does want to move forward, but I just want to clarify a few things on uh, Sean's memorandum. The land purchase is uh, not an issue anymore. I've talked to the uh, residents this afternoon, okay? And the uh, bridge location, that's settled. The timing of the project was an issue at the time. I don't think it's an issue, still an issue. And the land acquisition issue is resolved. And now we're left with, uh, we did see uh, have a delegation with the ministry and they turned us down and they sort of pointed us in the direction of going uh, into a, a loan situation for the bridge. So maybe we could look at that, but the total cost is now that the decking uh, is involved, the decking is done now. It's, uh, it's overdue in uh, 2020. So now we, we do have to deal with it. So, uh, but I just want to point out a few issues that uh, uh, it doesn't seem to me that we're being fair to these residents. They, they are residents of West Nipissing and I can't uh, justify leaving infrastructure uh, uh, issues uh, left with the residents. When there's an, an infrastructure uh, issue in West Nipissing, we, uh, that's what we're there for. We, we deal with it and that's why we're collecting all these taxes from up there. And uh, it's unfair for them to not have a voice at the table here. And uh, it seems that we're being uh, turned off every time, but uh, the council uh, needs to look at this and uh, the residents of West Nipissing uh, need to know what's going on. And uh, hopefully they're listening tonight, but uh, it's, a, it's an ongoing issue. It's gotta be dealt with. It's, we can't hide our heads in the sand here. So, uh, uh, I'm hoping that uh, at least council can send it back to budget and we can have a discussion, but uh, uh, there's always a, an open invitation for councillors to look at the bridge if you want to go look at the issue. And uh, what else do I... Uh, yeah, so all the, there's some issues that have, have been dealt uh, with uh, through communication, and I think that's the key here. Uh, we need to uh, communicate and make sure that everybody's aware of everybody else and I, I just can't see it being put into the the the, the bad burners it's a, it's a it's a real issue I know it's a big cost but who's going to pay for it that's our responsibility that's why we collect ca taxes to provide services and infrastructure repairs and, and on and on and this issue has been uh, there since 2016 the other council has has judged that 400,000 was enough. This council has never added any monies. We've never wanted to discuss it. We did say that 400,000, that was the max, but it does make sense. They've tried their best. We've tried our best to get some grants. It's not there. We have to find some other way of financing this bridge. It's ours. It's our responsibility and everybody needs to accept that. But thank you for your time. Thank you, uh, De Councillor Denny. Now, I, just a question here, Denny. Uh, you're saying the land acquisition is completed and they, they have agreed on selling the land. Is this what you're saying? I'm not sure. This is what you said. Lang it's they have agreed to not to uh, resist the land. And I think they're going to lease the land to the, to the bridge. Where the bridge is right now, it's, it's the... Uh, Crane's land, I think, and uh, they're, they're willing to just forget that and, and uh, let us build a bridge on it. So like we're we building a the bridge on the same area, right? Yes. So there's not a, there's no land issue here. So you're saying the bridge location, uh, the, there was no problem. Okay, it's just that if they build the bridge in the same area, it just costs more money. You know, I, I mean, we have to understand that we're trying to, to do something here at, 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 in the best way possible at the at least amount of money, not to you know, not to to say that they're not worth it. It's just that we're it's like every other project. So I'm going to go around table, or unless uh, Sean, did you have anything uh, to to add to this? If uh, do you have anything new to add to this situation before we go on? Um, not not necessarily. Uh, I think the memorandum uh, touches on on the the points that that I'm aware of. Um, the, the land acquisition 
um, I, I think is still required, even though the bridge stays, because essentially we were building a bridge to private property. So I think that was, uh, and Melanie can maybe chime in, and, and because I think I think that's what what we were uh, contemplating with. Uh, we still need to land our bridge on on uh, municipal property and not private property. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll let you elaborate, Denny. Go ahead if you have a statement. Well, I think the land purchase. All that we need to do is uh, contact the uh, the uh, the other party and uh, negotiate and uh, hear them out and see what they have. I think they have changed their position, and I think it's not for me to say, but uh, maybe uh, Sean can contact them and uh, resolve this issue. I think it's resolvable, as far as I I've been told today. So uh, that's all I got to say about it. Let's not put uh, everything to rest because of a little oh. issue like that. So let's let's communicate and let's deal with it. All right, so then uh, something else, something new came up today that Sean is not familiar with, I guess, and that maybe Sean should uh, contact the, the people involved and uh, along with uh, Mr. Barbo and see exactly what's uh, evolved from, from today. Uh, does, uh, I can go around and get, okay, Jay, you have something to add? Well, I, I think uh, prior to, unless you want to carve out this part uh, in, of a budget discussion, but as Councillor uh, Senecal has uh, advocated, it really comes down to what is Council's wish with regard to uh, spending uh, the appropriate amount of money uh, in order to uh, satisfy this bridge. And uh, if there's a change of Council position at um, then uh, we'll reflect it in the budget. But prior to uh, raising hopes and negotiating land, we want to be a little bit closer to the thought that council will be, uh, you know, will be um, uh, amenable to um, mm -hmm. funding it. So uh, we're going to do a round table here and I'll go to uh, Councillor uh, Chris Fisher first. Uh, so I just have a, a couple of questions. Um, so I hear the word private property, landing a bridge, and I immediately think of the bridge in Crystal Falls that was paid for by the residents. So my first question would be, what is the difference between this bridge and that bridge? Because that was not paid for by the municipality. And secondly, I'd be interested uh, to look at that. I realize time has transpired and it's more money. My understanding um, uh, of what took place is the idea was that the town would kick in $400,000 and then there would be a community improvement fund, which I don't know, something we borrow the money and then they pay it back over 30 years. And I assume, I assume that would be the residents in the area or something like that. Uh, I, and so now we're talking $1.2 million and four hundred thousand. So I would like to see... Um, in order to understand better sort of what that stuff looks like. So, so two questions, I, I suppose there for uh, maybe one for the treasurer and one for the CAO, I'm not sure. Well, I think the first part, uh, and uh, Melanie will uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the difference between the two situations is the bridge in Crystal Falls we never owned. It wasn't a municipal road. Uh, and that's why it uh, fell on uh, the residents. This one is a municipally maintained bridge uh, and has been so to a, you know, a class six or class five standard on the other side. But, uh, but we have been uh, maintaining that as a uh, municipal uh, road. So that's the difference on that. With respect to crunching uh, the numbers, uh, I, before a little bit like, uh, you know, uh, consensus of all, but before going and asking, uh, Elisa to crunch numbers on what a local improvement charge would look for the difference. Um, I think that Councillor Senecal is probably asking for a discussion prior to that with respect to uh, what Council is willing to do, uh, whether they fund it all or keep it status quo or uh, raise it to a level. And then at that point, Elisa will then come back and uh, provide, uh, cr you know, crunch those numbers. Uh, I think that would be the fair process. Thank you. That sounds reasonable to me. Thank you, uh, Councillor Chris. Councillor uh, Rowley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, uh, to uh, insinuate that Council is, is, is unfair on this issue, uh, I, I don't think that's right, uh, Councillor Denis. 
Um, at, at the time that was brought forward to previous council, it would have, uh, uh, the cost to rebuild that bridge was uh, 400,000 and council was ready to go that route, but the resident were not. And this is why it's been pushed back and back. So he says, we'll put this amount in a reserve. So if ever they get to, to agree, the money would be there. Now it has escalated. It's not councils uh, that, that did this. It's the people that could not get along to get that bridge at that place. So it's not council's problem. It is the resident's problem. If it would have been done at the time, that bridge would be there now and people would be using it. So, and, and for me to give an answer right now on this, I would need to uh, see where we are at budget uh, to, you know, to, to make a really informed decision on are we willing to spend more money where if it would have been agreed prior, there would, this would not be an issue to you for you to handle. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Rowley. Councillor Leo. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. I agree with Councillor Rowley. I, I was there uh, at the council back then, and we were in agreement with, with, with the, with the propon proponents using that bridge, and we had put that money aside, and uh, something had happened, and then we didn't go through. But yeah, I say keep the money in urban once, if, if uh, uh, ever get a grant or whatever, or share is there. And then for the time being, you can't, we can't use uh, uh, the rest of council to uh, our, our budget, uh, your budget uh, to, for that grid and those, those roads uh, anywhere else. So right now I say I status quo. Thank you, Councillor uh, Leo. Uh, Madame Maris. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I do have some questions and comments and uh, partially correct pertaining to the issue about uh, why the project did not happen at the time that it was identified to Council of the Day. Because correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Chair, I think that the bridge, the abutment needed completely to be repaired and the plan was to take the abutment, build the new abutment for the bridge at a different location and take the decking from the actual bridge and move it onto the new abutment. And this is the issue where the land got involved as far as transaction pertaining to land. So I just wanted to highlight that but there's two things that I want to bring to the attention of council. Um, when we talk about the price, um, one of the factors of the price that was not incorporated in the initial project cost was the decking. Because I think from the get-go, the project had to do with the abutment that needed to be replaced. And when we had an engineering report at the time in 2016, it stated that the decking was still good for 10 years. And I don't think that the price included the decking. Now, with further engineering that was done or further review with the engineering firm, it was identified that it's not no longer just the abutment of the bridge, but you're gonna be in a position that you're gonna to have to replace that decking. Because in 2016, our memo says that the lifespan of the decking was for four years, but I believe that should have been 10 years because that was the information that was provided to me and Councillor Denis at the time that we did a delegation request with the Minister of Infrastructure. So when we look at the increased cost, we're also adding a component to this project that now has become a critical issue and is now time sensitive because there's no sense in rebuilding the bridge and putting old decking that you're going to have to come back in a few years because the clock is ticking 
and be required to replace that decking. So I guess, Mr. Chair, I'm asking clarification regarding that since we have Sean, our manager of public works with us. Did the initial price, the initial costing for the project for the bridge include the costing for the decking at that time? Or did it just specify that the decking would have a lifespan of 10 years remaining and that would need to be factored at a later date? So uh, through you, Mr. Chair, the scope of work identified in 2016 was to construct new abutments immediately adjacent to the existing abutments, grabbing the existing deck and dropping it on the new abutments, being less disruptive to the local um, economy uh, or the, the lodges and, and you know, the, the, uh, the cottagers. Okay, thank that you. Was the, that was the scope. So yeah, you're, you're correct that now um, there's no sense spending money on new abutments and, and grabbing an old deck that only has two life, uh, two years of life left in it. So that you're you're correct, Madam Mayor. Okay, thank you. So I wanted to clarify that because when we talk about the price that has escalated from 2016 till now, uh, we also added a big portion of that project uh, regarding the rehabilitation at that bridge. Now we're talking about the decking, which was not being talked about in 2016. So when you look at 400,000 to 600,000, that's probably your 200,000 margin pertaining to the cost increase from that time to this time and add on the decking and add on also some other uh, additional remedial work required with the abutment as identified by our public works manager. So that's, um, you know, in fairness to the residents, I think that they need to know this. And uh, I wanted to highlight that because we did all get an email from uh, cottagers on the island that were upset stating that council was entertaining at spending maybe a million dollars on a specific project, which is an infrastructure which is owned by the municipality. We have like 35 bridges that we have to maintain. And unfortunately, uh, these bridges were inherited with amalgamation. And I think our job is to look at a plan on how we can address and maintaining our infrastructure. And as Conseil Denis mentioned, uh, we're talking about the tourist sector and probably uh, the one that had been hit the hardest during COVID. 2018 forest fire last year the flood uh, the the year after the flood and now COVID I mean these individuals probably do not have money to spare to be able to invest it in a community improvement program but I'd really like to know um, from the engineering firm the actual cost to be able to address both, how much for the abutment, how much for the decking, and whatever the difference, if there's an opportunity to look at an Ontario infrastructure loan, and I'm not the accounting expert, but the lifespan of a bridge, if it lasted this long, for over 50 years, I would expect that if they have a new bridge, it's probably going to last another 50 years. So we probably would be able to amort, 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 someone can help me out. Uh, amortize. Amortize uh, this bridge probably to the maximum of a loan. And even if we were to look at a loan that would be within the range of 5,500 to 600,000, you know what, you're looking at a budget cost of in the range of anywhere from 20 to 30, $35,000 a year. And we resolve the issue about one specific infrastructure that belongs to us. Thank you. Okay, my turn. Conseil Yvon, it's my turn. Now he's frozen. Okay, I'll go. Well, uh, my question is, can you give me an example of a bridge that we own in the area? 
Like we now we know that the one in Crystal Falls doesn't belong to us, so it was uh, no way that we can pay for something with the, that we don't own, right? So can somebody name me uh, maybe a couple of bridge we have in the municipality mail? Do you, uh, and I mean uh, like a uh, bridge that it's used on a daily oh, basis and people, like... what? Okay, what's happening here? Do you, Mr. Chair, were you just looking for the name of any bridge? Uh, any company? bridge that we own and that it's that people need to travel somewhere, like it's. Well, there's one on La Plage Road. There's one over here on Cash Bay Road. Savignac Road was actually uh, 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 caved in and uh, repaired by uh, the municipality, probably around uh, 15 years ago. Uh, okay, so that was that so was. I mean, I, I do. Okay, thank you. That's, that's, uh, I mean, I know that we had to do make a decision. I'm not too sure if I was there. I think I was there when the one in Werner that the, uh, the whole highway that we need to, uh, and then we decided not to repair it because people can go around. There's other way to travel to uh, people need to go. But right now, if we look at lodges and we uh, look at people living on that permanently and we lose uh, 45, even 30 or whatever job in the summertime, and the fact remains, that infrastructure belonged to us. I mean, we repaired the other one. We're looking at the other bridge. We're putting repair. I mean, we need to find a way because you know what? What's going to happen if there's a, a fire there when there's no bridge and uh, or somebody die and the ambulance cannot go? And uh, so who's going to be responsible for that? Because it, it is our responsibility. It belongs to us. So there's got to be, we got $400,000 at long-term uh, loan. And I'm not, uh, I, I know that Alicia might be, uh, may be saying, oh my God, not another loan. But I mean, long-term loan that, uh, like I said, for $600,000 for 30, 35 years, I, I mean, uh, and it would be set up for the next 50 years. There's nobody around this table would be blamed for not wanting to do it again because we're all going to be dead. Let's just say by that time that it's going to be good. Maybe Melanie, you're younger, and Stefan and Sean, hopefully. But the reality is it's, go it's got to be fixed. It belongs to us and people need it. It's not like a luxury that they have. We need to, to, to do something, find a way, and we can. We have smart people around the table. Alicia can work with shift, like with magic, to try to figure out something that's not gonna take her arm from every resident of West Nipissing. But that's the big difference. That thing belongs to us and people need to use it. So how can you say no? How can, how can we say no and we're not touching that? And wash our hands. So that's my comment. And I mean, there's nothing much we'll be able to do. And at this point of time, I don't think council should make a decision. I think they should go back and we should look at option if we need to finance it, what will be, including maybe the, the people, whatever, a, a way that uh, we can repair that bridge. So make a decision tonight that no, we don't want to look into that. I don't think that's a solution at all. And that's not fair. So thank you. Mr. Chair, is he back? I think he froze. And then I'll just take over in the interim. Cosi Rowley. Uh, again, uh, like uh, Council Lee just said, it's not fair to ignore this bridge. And I don't think Council did ignore it. Council tried to fix, but it's the uh, the resident that can that could not get along. Now they're getting along, apparently. So if that's the case, could be a different story. I'm not saying it is. But the thing is, is it's not on the shoulders of councillors. It's on the shoulders of the resident that were there. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm back, Madame Meredith. Uh, I don't know why I froze. I don't have a clue. Okay. Put your you, ear up. Are you able to see all members of uh, council, uh, Mr. Chair? No, I'm not. No, I'm on my telephone. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, I'll, I'll just... Mr. Dan uh, just a second, please. Um, I'm just notifying the chair that I'll just uh, step over and continue chairing his portion. 
There was Conseil Denis and Conseil Dan. That's right. Yeah. Thank you, Madame Edis. Would you continue? Conseil Denis, you're on mute. Denis, my man as well, Conseil Denis, do you wish to have the floor to speak at this moment? You are on mute. And we see Sachler. Sorry about that. I'm having trouble with my audio, real trouble. But, anyways, uh, uh, you brought up a good point, Madam Mayor, that. Uh, oh. are, you, are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. Oh about the abutment and the decking. Uh, that's why there's a difference in price. And I'm not, uh, another issue is I don't want to blame, I'm not blaming the other uh, council. I'm sure they did their best to, uh, uh, to, to do what was the right thing at the time, but uh, doesn't mean that uh, that excuses our responsibility. Uh, I'm not sure that the uh, misunderstanding was uh, in between uh, residents over there. I'm just not going to comment on that, but uh, otherwise, uh, I, I think uh, we, we need to, uh, to look at it as a council and uh, uh, try and find some financing. I don't uh, know that any other residents have to pay for their infrastructure, and I think we should move forward with this somehow and maybe bring it back to budget, and Elisa could probably find some financing uh, options that we could use or but we can't just let the residents uh, without a bridge. That's the only way they can cross up there. And uh, it's their livelihood and it's a major tourist area. So, uh, you know, we want tourists and then uh, we don't supply them with any uh, options. So, uh, yeah, it's unfair for those uh, 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 the lodges and the residents there. And I know it's, it's a lot of money, but uh, uh, it's nobody's fault. It's a... Uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, a mother nature thing that uh, the bridge has done. So we have to fix it. And let's, the more we fight it, uh, it's not gonna go away. So let's try and work together and uh, try and find a solution. That's all I'm saying right now. And not to just say, okay, we've done what we can. Uh, there's always options. That's why we're counselors and mayors. And uh, we try to work with uh, the residents and find solutions. That's our jobs. So uh, with that, I'll let, uh, let this go. Hopefully, uh, I'm not sure what the next step would be. I just don't want to let it to hang there. Mr. Chair. Uh, Madam Minister, can anyone hear me? Mm -hmm. I can hear you. Okay, good. I'm back, I guess. Thank okay. you. If you want to continue, uh, Madam Minister, is that... Uh, no, it's okay. You may proceed, yep. but uh, there was Councillor Dan that was next in line to be able to uh, discuss... Okay or bring forward a comment or questions. All right, well, to you, Dan. Hey, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm baffled with what was tonight. Uh, it, you know, we're talking uh, loans, we're talking about local improvement fund, we're talking about uh, raising our taxes by 2% to pay for the, uh, to pay for the $1 million. Uh, I, I like what uh, Councillor Denis said, why don't we ask, uh, uh, Alicia to do some number crunching and see what, what we can do and then uh, move forward with that. Because uh, again, I'm telling you, we've heard so many different things. We heard status quo. We said the number crunching. Somebody threw out that it should be a, no, a local improvement fund. Then uh, somebody threw out the point that it should be a, a loan that's uh, amortized over 50 years. When, uh, you know, so let, let's, let's staff do some work. Denis, you, Councillor Denny, you said that there's been a change of opinion or a change of uh, in in those people there, and that they're ready to sit down and talk talk, you know, with us. So let's do it that way, and and I think that you know that way we can come to a conclusion and put this to bed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Councillor Dan. Well, the point well taken. So now we'll go to Conseiller Lise. Now, moi j'ai dit ce que j'avais à dire, mais. Okay. Uh, I am in agreement with uh, Councillor Dan that uh, at this point of time, uh, we cannot set it aside and look at option. And option is obviously have to do with money, which way and how much and what can we do. So thank you. Okay. So uh, thank you all. We've, uh, 
I and I would have to agree with what has been last said there with the Councillor Denny and Councillor Dan. I think we should allow uh, the professionals look into how we can approach this uh, and uh, see what is best for for the cause. So, uh, uh, Madame Medes, I think it's best that we look at. Is everyone in favor of that? that we allow uh, Madame uh, Alyssa to look at this to see where uh, we can uh, go with this and how we can pay for it or whatever. Way, what other, other way there is uh, to to do this? Is, does anybody have any problems with that? Councilor no. Roll? No, not at all. Don't have any problem with that. This is what I said before: is we should we should discuss this at budget. But it's just the idea of the blame. But that's okay. Now it's yeah. settled. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So then that's how we'll proceed. Then we'll ask Alyssa to to look at this and see whether. Uh, as to how we can approach this in, a, in a, hopefully in a better way. So when I met us, that can, can completes my uh, my issue here. So I now give you the floor. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's nearly eight o'clock. That concludes our committees. Before proceeding to regular council, does council and I'm just seeking direction. Does council want a ten minute recess? Yes. I would need a volunteer as a mover and a seconder, Conseiller Chris, Conseiller Lees. Please moved by Councillor Fisher and seconded by Councillor Lee Senecal. At approximately 7.50 p.m., motion was tabled for a 10-minute recess. Everyone in agreement? Carried.
Terminant. Okay, there you can talk. It was gross. If I want to lower the thermostat bill, is it the one on the wall? Yep. Okay. No. Mel, you don't have water in your office, see? Eh? Are you in your office? I am. Do you have a spare bottle of water? We don't have any bottled water. We just okay. have the sink. The sink. We have a water machine, but you need a vessel to put it in. Okay. I'm not sure if it really works or not because the light doesn't come on. So I'm going to leave it where it was. Find this section of the building is weird with the. Um, oh, geez, that water is not good there. Because I feel the heat sitting right beside the, the rag. How about that? No, yeah, it's controlled by the wall. So, but it's not the end of the world. When? Why? Check uh, the rad itself. Uh, there's a little round button. Um, okay. You might want to turn it, turn it counterclockwise. Okay. Yeah. This. Uh... <laughs> oh, geez. Kill me, you. <laughs> okay. We'll see if it goes. Uh... If I look like a roasted chicken, you'll know why. <laughs> okay. So, so much. Uh... to continue the meeting and we proceed with the regular portion of uh, council la réunion um, régulière de la séance on procède avec uh, planification with planning is there a volunteer as a mover and a seconder for the resolution conseil Yvon? Conseil Chris. It is moved. It is moved by Councilor Jemaine and seconded by Councilor Fisher. Be it resolved the bylaw number 2021-16 being a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw 2014-45 to rezone certain lands located on Price Pal in Werner from residential two to residential three exception zone, highway commercial, and residential two holding zone shall come into force and take effect on the day it is passed. Okay, are there any questions or comments? This uh, was dealt with at uh, the Planning Advisory Committee and all the supporting documentation that the committee members were provided is also shared to all members of council. No objections, a deputy carried. Is there a volunteer and a seconder for um, a mover and a seconder for the next resolution? Conseil Lise, Conseil Denis. It is moved by Councillor Lise Senecal and seconded by Councillor Denis Senecal. Whereas a public meeting of the West Nipissing Planning Advisory Committee was held on March the 8th, 2021, to consider draft approval of a plan of subdivision application number SCBD 202101, made by 2682213 Ontario Limited for a subdivision of seven lots and three blocks on lands legally described as lots one and two to two, two. lots one, two, and five to 46, block B and block C, and part of lot 10, concession four in the geographic township of Caldwell. And whereas written submissions and public submissions were made and considered by the Planning Advisory Committee, and whereas the West Nipissing Planning Advisory Committee has recommended to council for the municipality of West Nipissing that the draft plan be approved subject to certain conditions. Be it therefore resolved that a draft plan of subdivision be granted for application number SUBD 2021-01 made by 2682213 Ontario Limited for the subdivision of seven lots and three blocks 
on lands legally described was lots one and two, five to 46, blocks B and C, and part of lot 10, concession four in the geographic township of Caldwell. Are there any questions or comments? Um, just very quickly, uh, the two resolutions with uh, the zoning and uh, the severances has to do with housing development uh, by a developer from the community of Werner. And uh, just as a provision identified in one of the documents, it's um, uh, there's going to be up to four separate duplex dwelling on one lot. And this was identified that it would be done in phases. Just a very quick question to our clerk. Uh, the actual subdivision agreement, we're approving a draft. Once the draft and everything identified as requirement or conditions will be brought back to council to approve the actual subdivision agreement? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. What is what will happen now is I believe that Mr. Miller had indicated at the Planning Advisory Committee that he's going to be seeking a pre-servicing agreement, which will allow them to get moving on the installation of the infrastructure. So he will be coming back to council with a pre-servicing agreement to start the infrastructure, which will set up the rules for the infrastructure, but the subdivision will come once uh, that uh, some of the infrastructure has been put in. Okay, thank you so much. Um, are there any objections? Okin objection? None. Carried. Adepi. Are there volunteers as a uh, mover and a seconder for the next resolution? Conseil Yvon, Conseil Denis. It is moved by Councillor Duhame and seconded by Councillor Denis Senecal. We have resolved the bylaw number 2021-17 being a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw 2014-45 to rezone certain lands on Villeneuve Court in Sturgeon Falls from residential one zone to light industry zone M1 shall come into force and take effect on the day it is passed. Okay, now no doubt there's gonna be a lot of questions. There's gonna be a lot of comments because this one request at the uh, planning advisory committee uh, was highly contentious and there was a lot of objections. And I'm just trying to locate the email that we got today because we had, uh, all members of council receive subsequent information regarding to documentation uh, regarding objections and also a excellent uh, presentation from the developer trying to address all the issues. So what I'll do is um, probably go do a round table for people to identify any questions that they may have on the request or any issues that do require clarification. Conseil Yvon. You are on mute, uh, Conseil Yvon. Uh, thank you, Madam Edis. Uh, with respect to the question of uh, rezoning, uh, well, first of all, they have a rezone from R1 to M1 uh, in that area. The, uh, you know, I looked at it uh, carefully and, and uh, Came, you know, like we talked about buffering uh, with respect to uh, noise factors and whatnot. And, uh, you know, the building itself, that the, the, the warehouse that they're talking about would be a buffer in itself. Um, and then and if, it had, if it had been any other industry than a warehouse, I probably would have rejected it. Uh, really, realistically, there's not going to be much change with respect to the amount of traffic that's there now. Um, and then what really bothers me with this is that we have an opportunity of correcting like uh, uh, the areas, the residents in north of, of that building and east of Circa or west of Circa are having problems with water issues that I, uh, I investigated today and looked at it. And yes, the water is backing up in their backyards. So this issue could be addressed once and for all and be, uh, we, it would certainly help the people in that area um, again. I have no objections uh, to uh, rezoning it. Uh, if it had been another industry other than uh, a warehouse, I would have really not considered it at all. 
but I do hope that the council will uh, adopt a resolution to uh, allow uh, the, the, the Sagan brothers to move ahead with this. It's creating uh, work and it's, uh, it's certainly giving us a, a good tax base to look at. And uh, I don't think uh, it'll make much of a difference to the residents in that area, but I'm just hoping council uh, will certainly approve it. Thank you, Madam Edis. Thank you, uh, Conseil Vaughan, Conseil Chris. So I'm a, I, I'm going to ask for a recorded vote on this one, and I'm a, I'm a hard no on this one. Um, there are just too many concerns from the residents, uh, the wide ranging, and uh, and I, I feel for them. I've spent a, a lot of time over the last couple of days conversing with them, and um, uh, I put myself in their shoes, and I would feel exactly the same way. I spent uh, some time today looking at a satellite map of uh, Sturgeon. And certainly that looks to me like if we put a building there, that would be the southernmost uh, piece of industry uh, that, that we would have. And it just, it's just from an aerial perspective even, it doesn't look right. The industry belongs further north along the highway. We're mixing residential and in, in industry. And it might be a warehouse tomorrow, but once we rezone it, it's out of our hands. Um, you know, and, and there's, there's always going to be scope creep. I've got loads and loads of notes, but but basically, uh, I'm a no, and I'm asking for a recorded vote. Thank you. Conseiller Rowley. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> also, uh, uh, that is a residential area, and I feel for the people that are living there. Um, they 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 would feel invaded their privacy. And and uh, it's it's not it's definitely not the feeling that I would I want to send to them not at sitting at this uh, council table. Um, I think the industrial park should remain in the industrial park area. So with this, I have to protect the resident, uh, and I just got to say no to this. Thank you, Conseil Leo. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes. Also, I receive a lot of phone calls, and that's. Uh, the area that I represent, the ward I represent. And I had so many emails and phone calls from the residents uh, around that area. And uh, it's, it's a safety issue also for the children. So no, I will not support it either. Thank you. Conseil Denis. Dan. Oh, excuse. Conseil Dan. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I was really taken back of uh, when we had our planning meeting. I felt that uh, we didn't listen to them and uh, they were very concerned. Uh, and uh, the thing, the point being is that after that, they've been uh, calling us and talking, well, calling me. I caught it, no, numerous calls and emails. And I think the thing is, is that we as a community or as a council have to respect the quality of life of our people that live in our community. And sometimes quality of life has to take over economic development. And in this sense, the quality of life, as far as I'm concerned, takes a uh, precedent over this. And that uh, I think that that piece of property should not be uh, rezoned. So uh, I too am totally against this resolution. Um, in regard and because of the fact that uh, I, I think we have to respect those people. They're, they're, they're very worried, they're anxious and uh, you know, the thing is, is that if that would have happened to me, I, I'd be in the same position. Uh, I would have the same position they have. Hey, Denis. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I'm at the opposite end. I think that uh, there is possible to mix light industrial with residential uh, areas. And uh, just the area across the street is a and two together, so uh, I'm. Uh, I don't see uh, why we should proceed. It's going to fix our drainage problems that they have in the vicinity, and I think uh, it's a warehouse. It's not like we're going to uh, be. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, uh, my uh, my comment is to, uh, as per the uh, the planning board, to go ahead with this project. Thank you. Okay, Conseil well, I have been receiving phone call. I've been uh, talking to the people that live in that uh, that uh, that street. Uh, I'm not going to name any name. Very good conversation. Very long conversation with a couple of them. 
I do understand how they feel. And I mean, uh, I've been part so many times that uh, objection from people to want to have some uh, type of building in their residential area. We just live one in Werner with the, what they want to build in the close to, uh, to Werner. So this is something that is very normal. I, I, I live in a place that my backyard is going to have at least 44 new building at some point of time i don't know like i said i'm retired i don't have a bunch of children playing in my yard then but i knew when i bought that it was there no it's true i mean i i'm well cause you dan don't be surprised i'm not saying that i dislike the kid but i move in a quiet place to be quiet that's my style so i uh, don't shake your hand when i'm honest so i'm not saying that i don't like children but that's beside the point but I know, I know what I was getting myself. I know they were a subdivision. I moved there. I take the risk. And whatever happened, it's going to happen. And if I don't like it, I'm going to sell my house and go somewhere else. That's as simple as that. Okay? But the reality is, when we look at it, we, we, we talk about it, I don't know how many times. Uh, I mean, we f we're fixing one big problem with the water. Because after that, it's not the responsibility to the municipality to take over. And I, the, the, the person that bought the lot did what he had to do with his lot. So at this point of time, there's going to remain something unsolved if we don't do something. But most of all, if you go, I, I, I was looking at the presentation and I'm, I'm at page six. And it is an industrial park. What do you expect? And the, the it's been done approved by council in 2011 that plan i think what do you call it again that uh, the official, plan official plan the official plan so they're surrounded by m1 they're surrounded by m2 so what is m2 mel m1 i know what it is what is m2 heavy industry a little bit more okay. expensive and there's across the street following uh, uh, Vilna Street, it's M2. So what we're saying tonight, if we refuse that, that during our term anyways, we will not approve nothing. And it's an industrial part. It's part of a municipal um, uh, a plan. I, I don't get it. I, I do get the people, I feel for them. But the kind of, of thing they're building, the buffing, they're buffing, they're looking at everything and it's been taken care of. So I, I really don't get it because we, 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 we accept it. And then we have a planning board and we're talking about <laughs> respect. Usa, we, we have a planning board that made a decision. We have a planning person that recommend the, the, the zoning based on what she have and what we can do. And so what else? Like uh, we, we're going back and forth, changing our mind at council, going at planning board, they approving it, coming back. And yes, I can understand the people. I feel for those people, but I, I think they, they are concerned, but I don't think they will be affecting them that much because uh, it's not like a big operation. The, 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 the work's going to be inside. There's going to be a little bit more truck trucking, obviously. But I mean, it's going to be happening during the day. It's not going to be uh, during the day. So at night, uh, we have uh, some people yes. comment that they had problem with uh, with uh, the noise, a problem with uh, the driving. Well, we have bio to protect, and we have OPP to uh, to they can call to if there's uh, speeding or something like that. And this is a company also that you need to remember safety is very very high. Because if they have ticket, if they don't respect something, they pay fine. They, they, you know, and they have uh, the insurance goes up because it, it's work with the uh, number of uh, infraction or something like that. So obviously, there's four that doesn't want it, and but it, it is sad because I think we should as much. Why not? We we're working on a development economy. Everybody's excited about development, and we're shutting down the only industrial park really close to town. There's other place, uh, but not that much. Look at the map, it's in red. Look at the, the, the plan. So we're shutting down, so we might as put some sign and say we're shutting down the business in West Epicing. And I mean, and that's what we want to do. That's what we want to do. But I mean, we're going to have to look and change that because there are people that bought plan, uh, bought lot, and they want to build their business. And then we won't be able to approve any other business because they will obviously object. And I'm not saying that it's wrong. They have the right to do that. 
But I mean, we're making a decision to, to try to attract person. So why do what, uh, like Councillor Dan was saying, we need to have a, an analysis of what kind of people you need to work with. The people need to work expertise. They need to have uh, 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 industry to, to work on it. And now we're shutting it down. So I'm very disappointed if that's the case tonight. So that's my say. And I do feel for people and I appreciate the call and we have light, nice, talk without not yelling at each other and respectful and i think that was great and i think most of them hear what i had to say and i told them that i will base my decision on facts and what need to be done there and that's what i'm doing and I, i'm very disappointed that some counselor because i mean we've been having so many times the concern about water and it would be fixed and they completely fixed so that's what I have to say. So my vote, obviously, is I'm in agreement with the debate. Uh, we'll call a recorded vote. But before yeah. doing that, I do have some questions and comments, which I'm entitled to as well. I just want to ask a question to the clerk, because I've been hearing a lot of rumbling that the uh, the lot adjacent to the building, puis je que le public savent, c'est qu'on parle de l'ancien édifice de Cisco, where the old Cisco business was. But that lot that the developer, the owner of that building wishes to acquire is presently zoned an R1. Was that an error in our official plan to have zoned that as an R1 instead of an M1 or M2? I, uh, can you manage? I, I don't know. Uh, the official plan was completed before I came here and that section was already designated as employment. So I, I really honestly can't speak to what the rationale was. Um, it was when the zoning bylaw was done, um, it was matched to its use um, and being adjacent to residential, it was designated as residential uh, because that's what it was uh, sitting next to. Okay, but it was designated for employment, right? In the official plan, yes. Okay, so that lot was designated for employment. Um, at the planning board, um, individuals that had concerns or had objections or complaints had the opportunity to voice what were their concerns. And I'm really happy that the developer listened to those concerns. And the assurance that was provided to address those concerns was making sure that if the rezoning was approved, that there would also be a site control plan. And that site control plan would be a legal document that would be registered on the deed of the property. And that the municipality would prescribe and have a say in the layout of the warehouse, would have a say pertaining to the buffer, and would also have a say in remedial work that is required to address the water issue. And that was the initial water issue that Conseil Leo brought forward because he had received a phone call and conducted a visit at the residence location behind that building, which is behind the building located on Bay Street. And Conseil Leo was provided photos of the water problem and had shared it with the clerk. And there were also site visits that were done by our administration, or I believe our public work manager and our CEO. Right now, as is, um, there's no water problem that will be rectified if the zoning is not changed because there will not be a site control. So Conseil Leo, if you do receive a further phone call from the neighbor located behind the building, and if they have water issues, I guess you'll have to notify that resident that it's gonna to have to be a civil issue. A civil issue between the developer and the landowner. It was really emphasized at the planning board that this site control plan would provide the mechanism for the municipality to do something to ensure that there would be remedial work to fix the water. If it's not rezoned, the municipality cannot 
do nothing to intervene. It will be definitely a civil issue between the two landowners. And honestly, we own that parcel. And I don't think anyone wants to build a home, a beautiful home adjacent to this humongous building uh, where they are conducting a business operation. I would doubt that. So what we're doing is we're basically probably landlocking any opportunity of selling this parcel of land and capturing additional taxes. So to me, uh, based on the information provided at the planning board and the summary and recommendation, it conforms to our official plan to rezone it from an R1 to an M1 and that the property would be placed under site plan control, which would be a legal document registered on the deed. So I would support it because the site control plan addresses the issue that were identified as concerns by the residents that reside in the area. It addressed the issue of the buffer property that the municipality would retain, address the issue for noise and fix the water problem, and at the same time, create employment. So I think I've had my say, which those are the reasons I would support the request. And if there's any further questions, well, it's the time, because if there's none, then there's going to be a recorded vote. Conseil Broly. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You you just stated it that nobody would want to build a home next to a warehouse. That's that's exactly what we're doing. Okay. Well, no, that's not exactly what we're doing right now. The request is to be able for the owner operator of the building who wanted to expand on a warehousing facility, which would be two extra transports per day. It's a warehouse facility, not a large industrial company. I'm and not... across the street, it's zone an M2, and that M2 could be developed for heavier industry. And I'm there. Conseil Alice. Okay. And uh, so I don't know why we're not uh, going to be looking and changing everything because there will be no industry there, right? Because they all surrounded by that. Mel, I asked you example of the M2 that can be built. Um, I think, I, I'm sorry, I did not ask you. I wanted to ask you if you can give me an example. In an M2 zone? In an M2 zone. Um, just about any sort of industrial use, crematorium, contractor's yards, uh, abattoir. Um, uh, I could list them off. There's quite a number of uses in there, building supplies, motor vehicle repairs, transportation depots, waste disposal. No, I'm sorry, not waste disposal. My, my bad. <laughs> Uh, laundromats, uh, greenhouses, equipment sales, farm supply, all sorts of things like that. Okay, so so that's what I'm saying. We're going to have to look at that because there's already a lot that's been sold and we know it's there are a couple from the business, but I mean, this is this is really, really, really sad. So let's go and record a vote, I guess. Ready? Councillor Duhain? Councillor Duhain? Hospital micro? Yes. Councillor Fisher? Nay. Councillor Larabi? Uh, it's a big no. Councillor Mallet? No. Councillor Rivita? For the people that live around there, no. Councillor Denise Senecad? Big yes. Councillor Lee Senecad? For the people of West Central Singh and for the industrial park, I say yes, and I feel bad for the other people, but we cannot please everybody, and I'm sorry for that. So it's a big yes for me. Mayor Savage? Um, am I allowed to ask a question before proceeding on this? Stating my vote, I forgot to ask something. Or I can ask after my vote. Okay. okay. Uh, I say yes. It's defeated. Okay. 
Now, if I may, uh, Milani, can I just ask my question? And uh, it's your line of expertise. Now that, um, you know what, the proponent that wanted to develop the land, since there was an offer um, to purchase it with a condition, if uh, this goes to the Planning Board of Appeal pertaining to being denied the request, uh, when they go to Planning Board of Appeals, do they go according to land-based usage according to our official plan? Uh, first of all, this council would probably have to give authority for the appeal because we do own the land. Um, the municipality owns the land and the municipality had a authorize the uh, prospective purchaser to make the application. I believe the municipality would also have authorized uh, the applicant to make an appeal if they so wish to do. Um, that said, yes, the land use issues are all looked at uh, by the LPAT, uh, not just how it's designated, but everything in total. Okay, thank you. Okay, Java for me. I'm trying to keep the uh, oh. control of the, the mic. Okay, thank you. So now we move on to correspondence and account. Is there a volunteer to move and to second? Uh, Conseil Yvonne, yeah. Conseil Lise. It is moved by Council Duhame and seconded by Council Lise and account to get resolved that the minutes of the budget meeting held on March the 1st, 2021. Be adopted as presented. Are there any questions or comments? Any objections? None. Carried. Adopted. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Volunteer for the next resolution to move and second. Uh, Conseil Leo, Conseil Denis. It is moved by Councillor Manette and seconded by Councillor Denis Senecal. We have resolved that the minutes of the meeting of Council held on March the 2nd, 2021, be adopted as presented. Are there any questions or comments? None. Any objections? No. Carried. Adopted. For the next resolution, Conseil Yvon, Conseil Denis. It is moved by Council Duhain and seconded by Council Denis Senecal. We have resolved that the minutes of the budget meeting held on March the 3rd, 2021, be adopted as presented. Any questions, comments? None. Any objections? None. Carried. Adopted. Next resolution. Conseil Denis. Conseil Leo. It is moved by Councillor Denis Senegal and seconded by Councillor Leo Malet. We have resolved that the minutes of the budget meeting held on March the 10th, 2021 be adopted as presented. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Carried. Adopted. Volunteer for the next resolution. Conseil Bon, Conseil Denis. It is moved by Councillor Duhain and seconded by Councillor Denis Senecal. We have resolved that the minutes of the West Nipissing Planning Advisory Committee meeting held on January the 18th, 2021, be adopted as presented. Any questions or comments? Any objections? Where, where are we? Sorry. We are under F5. Okay. All in favor? Carried. Adoptee. To receive the minutes from the various boards, committees, uh, Committee of Adjustment and the District Nipsing Social Services Agency Board. Is there a volunteer to move and to second? Conseil Dan, Conseil Leo. It is moved by Councillor Revita and seconded by Councillor Mallet. We have resolved that the minutes of the following boards and committees be received. West Nipsing Committee of Adjustment, January 18th, 2021. DSAB. January 27th, 2021. Are there any questions or comments? None. No objections. Carried. Adopted. 
volunteer as a mover and a seconder for the next resolution pertaining to the January 2021 disbursement report. Volunteer, Conseil Dan, Conseil Denis. Was moved by Council Navida and seconded by Council Denis Senecal. We have resolved that the accounts payable disbursement sheets for January 2021 be received. Are there any questions, Kosi Ival? Please make sure to identify the number or the page of uh, as reference to council. Yes, I will. Thank you. Page two or eighty-nine. I'm not going to say any names here, but uh, the general insurance. That's a lot of money. Nine hundred fifty-nine thousand four hundred seventy-six dollars. Thousand. That's a lot of money. Okay, I just wanted to point it out. Thank you very much. Okay, but are you uh, highlighting the fact, would that be the insurance premium for the entire year? Maybe I can direct the question to our CEO or oh, to our is, Director uh, of Corporate Services. Yes, it's, it's the entire year. For the entire year. Okay, thank you. Could, uh, I, had, I had a... Okay. Uh, what, Madam uh, uh, if I may ask Alyssa, how much more is that than previous years? How much more is that than previous years, do you know? Yeah, just one second and I've got the number for you. Okay. It was, it was a big increase, absolutely. It was an increase of $194,000 or 25%. At least 25%. Wow. Uh, an increase of 194000 Yeah. Yes. 100%. Oh, wow. Yes. We, uh, through you, Madam, uh, Madam Chair, uh, we discussed this at, uh, count, or at uh, budget. Uh, it is a... Uh, significant amount. Uh, the issue is that it's an industry-wide uh, and municipal-wide issue. Uh, and um, we do shop it around regularly. We will have a look at it. But the issue that's also happening right now is there's a lack of supply uh, and, uh, and uh, folks that actually uh, underwrite municipal insurance now. Uh, and so it's going to get to be a larger problem. And I think we spoke uh, uh, at this at budget, but we are looking at uh, and working with uh, other municipalities, but also working with our broker uh, to see what we can do. Okay. Well, thank you for uh, highlighting that. Uh, it really gives us uh, a perspective of the um, increase for the yearly cost. And maybe at a subsequent meeting, uh, we can follow suit with other municipalities advocating to the province that they need to uh, fix insurance problems. Conseil so no, it's because I have question also on the. Please proceed. Okay. Well, one the first one is a clarification on uh, page one number four. I know what the uh, municipal property assessment is. Uh, I'm just curious, and I think Alicia or G can answer that. Is how do they because sixty one thousand dollars? How do they come about to that number? Did I ask? Did I say it right? Yes. So they they. Oh. They they do a, <laughs> they they provide us an estimate every year, um, and they do a, a global budget and then allocate it out to the, the municipalities. Um, I have the I have the document here. Is that the uh, actual cost for the entire year, or is it just a partial fee? That we're we built see? quarterly. Quarterly. Quarterly, yes, yeah, the quarterly billing. Um, it was very little change year over year on on that one. They, they've actually been fairly stable for a couple of years um, on on the uh, on our assessment. Um, yes, yeah, so they're, they're overall uh, it's a 0.7 decrease actually from our, our uh, assessment last year. Um, and it's based it's allocated to us based provincially on our uh, assessed value of properties and property counts. So well, that means, uh, like it's, if it's quarterly, like over two hundred, uh, well, close to two fifty 
more yep. closer to 250 a year. Yep. But I, I don't understand why are they, what are they doing for that? They're sending us what we should assess, the paper or the, I. They, yes, yeah, they do, they do all the assessment of all the properties. They maintain all the, um, uh, you know, any appeal status, everything to do with the assessment is not held at the municipality. It's all held with MPAC. Okay, good. Thank you, Alicia. Uh, 144, and uh, uh, just a question that uh, it's got to be part, I guess, what I just realized that we asked Stefan to give us uh, um, a report on uh, what the municipality was helping with organization and uh, the amount. So I just just clicked that I will have that answer when it comes back to budget. Um, and I had some big numbers, I think, that have to do with uh, like uh, 8 million, uh, 814 with him. I'm sure, no, that was 8,000. I'm trying to find it, Madam Mayor. It's not the right page. Uh, well, if I don't find it, then not a big deal. But I'm pretty sure it was for the police station. Again, we got to have a, uh, uh, a report on that. So it's okay. I'm okay with that. Can I be excused for 30 yes. seconds? Are there any other further questions or comments uh, pertaining to anything on the disbursement sheets? Okay. I just noticed um, when I did the total of uh, what were the legal costs for the month of January, as far as disbursements in January, I'm not sure that these were um, um, due to um, opinions obtained in the month of January, it could be the billing, but there's uh, at least over 11,000 pertaining to legal costs. Some could be land transactions, and some could be legal opinion or legal transactions. Um, I'd be interested in finding out exactly what um, activities or uh, an activity report pertaining to all the legal costs that, that the municipality is being charged. As I noticed more specifically on page eight, the municipal advisor, the municipal legal advisor that we use was roughly 7,000. And then there was another one uh, on that same page, two other more. Uh, but that name is normally known when it comes to land issues, which was in excess of $4,500. So on that one page, on page eight, there's more than $11,000 in legal fees. So I'm not sure if they were due to legal transactions encountered in January or if it represents more than just the month of January. But um, typically, if you get a bill, uh, it would, uh, they're a little bit behind in their billing. Uh, and so that could be a uh, a roll up of a few uh, of a few months, but uh, uh, we can provide you with a report as to the uh, type of legal uh, expense that we uh, incur in a, in a kind of a theoretical way as to uh, human resources assistance, uh, planning or, or corporate uh, assistance, and then there'd be real estate uh, uh, tra transactions as well. So we can put that on a general government agenda. Okay, thank you, thank you. So that was uh, my only question. Uh, so coming back to the resolution, are there any objections? Aucune objection? None? Carried? Adopté? Okay, now we move on to new business, les affaires nouvelles. Okay, so this is uh, the bylaw for disposition of municipal land, which we've discussed at committee. Um, I'm just going to ask um, for a volunteer as a mover and a seconder because we probably have a resolution, right? So, Conseil Chris, Conseil Denis. It is moved by Councillor Fisher and seconded by Councillor Denis Senecal. We have resolved the bylaw number 2021-18 being a bylaw to repeal bylaw 2015-57 to establish a procedure for the sale and disposition of lands owned by the municipality of West Nipissing shall come into force and take effect on the day it is passed. 
Okay, Ernie, any questions pertaining to a concierge? Well, I don't know if it's, uh, I, I, I don't remember. Did we had one before? Is that a revised one or is it the no. same one? Or it's a new one? It's a new one. Okay, mm -hmm. well, that's, that's I, I did not remember. We discussed this at committee yeah. pertaining. I know there were discussion, but I don't yeah. know if it was a, a, a revision of it. Okay. okay. So are there any questions pertaining to what, um, is proposed in the actual bylaw. None. Any objections? None. Harry Adductee. Okay, for the next item pertaining to deferral of tax installment dates, is there a volunteer as a mover and a seconder for the resolution, Conseil Lise, Conseil Denis? It is moved by Council Lee Senecal and seconded by Council Denise Senecal. It resolved that bylaw number 2021-19 being a bylaw to amend bylaw 2021-02, being a bylaw to levy taxes for 2021 and to provide for the payment of taxes and to provide for penalty and interest on arrears shall come into force and take effect on the date is passed. So um, just as a summary for this resolution, uh, it's providing a no interest, no penalty fee for individuals that pay their tax installment at a deferred date. And this would be applicable to all. Would that be correct, Alyssa? So this applies to the 2021 um, tax installment dates. And um, it, yes, it provides that there's no um, penalty and interest if you miss the installment dates. Um, you've got to the end of June, and then interest will start again in July. So do, I have a question. Okay. So for example, let's say that I don't pay my tax, I cannot pay my tax, and uh, I get to June, and I'm late uh, in July, I, I go and pay it. Will I be charged the interest before, or it's not going to be calculated, just the one starting in June? Um, so balances that are outstanding at um, June, at the end of June, sort of being the three months from the March installment, um, will be charged interest on July 2nd. Yes. So it's the one in March that the first three months that we're not paying. Okay, so my, I'm getting back yep. to my yep. Okay, so let's say I don't have money to pay my tax for uh, March. Yep. So I got till June to pay it? July 2nd. July 2nd, right? Yep. Yep. But I get to July 2nd and I pay only the portion like for, uh, well, it would be the same because I would pay that tax, but let's say I cannot pay the six month. Mm. That's what I'm saying. So, okay, I, it's, I don't think I can explain it the way, uh, at least I know you're, you're trying to look in my face and you're not seeing <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, so, you know, we, council had discussed sort of a, you know, a, a three month, you know, deferral of the, of the due dates. And I said the deferral of the due dates is, is problematic, but waiving the penalty and interest gives the same, the same impact. So that's why we've gone to, to July. But yes, if you um, get to, to the end of June and you still can't pay your taxes, you are going to have interest start accruing again. But in those cases, that's what we talked about. We really encourage those folks to call us, make oh, arrangements, yeah. to get something. We will send out communication when, when we send out late notices, you know, we'll, we'll say, hey, you know, make sure you, you make arrangements with us so that people don't end up a year behind, a year and a half behind, and just too far behind to catch up. Okay, so my question, I think I can I can ask it that you got to understand what I'm trying to say. Let's say they cannot pay it and you make arrangement. Will they be charged the interest they miss for the first three months? Oh, no, no. Okay, no, that was no. my, because you know, sometimes it's yeah. like when you're buying something, divide by 12 months or interest, but if you miss one month, then all the interest is, uh, so, okay, so thank you. So what we're saying, anyone that uh, for the tax installment of March and the tax installment of April, um, if you pay at a later date up to the end of June, uh, for those tax installments, you will not be charged any penalty or interest. Correct. Right. And this would be residential, all classes. Yep. And it's to recognize uh, the financial strain that uh, some may have experienced small businesses and others due to COVID. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, 
Any further questions? None. Any objections? Carried. Adopted. Okay, the next item is uh, the resolution for Freedom of Information Integrity Commissioner Report. Um, I don't see our CEO. He's probably live or on yeah. the call. Jay, you wrote a memo to Mayor and Council. Do you want to walk us through that memo? No, it's self-explanatory. Yeah, I know it is self-explanatory, but are there key points that you would love to highlight or highlight? No, I think I made my points. Uh, I, uh, I uh, documented it to make sure that uh, my points are, uh, are received. Uh, and, uh, you know, council can uh, debate, uh, question uh, or, or whatever, but um, I don't have any comments to add right now. Okay. Well, I'm going to start it off because I did read the memo and there's the one thing, the first point that I'd love to highlight and that I want to highlight, um, I don't want it to be perceived that at any given time, if anyone does ask any questions on the subject matter or service that um, it's um, diminishing the integrity or the professionalism of the employee. Because I will put it on record that I truly appreciate and admire the dedication and the professionalism of our clerk. And it doesn't prevail anyone from asking questions to have a good understanding. So my I'm, point on that, if you do want me to comment, then my point on that, your worship. Uh, let me but, finish, Ed Jay. Oh, okay. um, yeah. I offered you the opportunity and I just wanted to highlight that, and I'm confident that probably all members of council would echo that comment. Now, when I completed the form, uh, yeah, there were some nuance and issues that surfaced pertaining to freedom of information. And I think as elected official, we do have the right to obtain information and uh, having clarity, and I felt that there was nuance. Nuance because there had been freedom of information requests in the past done by some members of council, and they had been provided a written notification that uh, unfortunately the records do not exist. Then you subsequently have an outsider that submits two requests for freedom of information, and those reports did not exist either. So to me, it was nuance. And I did ask by submitting the agenda form to get an understanding of the process, the administration, um, the reporting, how it works, and the legislation, and the information to members of council and commissioner and so on. So, you know what? It shouldn't be perceived to be construed negatively. And I think uh, I'll ask the question. If it is perceived to be negatively, to, to be perceived negative, because one is seeking to have an understanding of a service that's being provided, well, then where do you ask the question when the issue is in the public forum? Um, did, is that a question to me? Well, I'm directing the question because I'm a seeking. Right. Are we just not to just go with the flow, not ask question? And if you ask question, then you're being accused that you're being sabotaging or criticizing or pointing the finger of uh, any employee working for this organization? Well, uh, okay. No, actually, uh, you, have, you certainly have a right to uh, ask questions. Uh, the memo then, uh, if you... Uh, indicates that if you had, uh, you, you seem to have, uh, you, you know, uh, pivoted uh, very, very quickly uh, in, in terms of going to a specific issue. And my point is, is if you're going to make an agenda request to have people, because that involved a few people, uh, that you asked for a generality uh, and you didn't ask for the specifics of a file, and then you raised one issue with a file, you didn't raise others. My second point uh, on that memo was, uh, and uh, where 
you seem to be getting ready for that, uh, despite and because and despite asking the clerk, who's the head of FOI, what her rationale was, and it could have been done, and uh, but you chose to um, uh, get your own advice. Not sure what kind of question you were asking uh, to the uh, information commissioner. Uh, to get a response. Of course, uh, if there's personal information about a counsellor, uh, which is grounds for exclusion, of course, that has to be not uh, given or, or that has to be shared uh, with, with the counsellor. Um, I, I renew the advice that the, that the uh, lawyer gave uh, with respect to the counsellors are in the public domain and uh, don't have that same uh, that same privilege. So that, those were my two points were uh, the fact that it seemed like uh, there's a guise to ask for something at council and it became something else and, and it, it didn't become general. Your, your question was general, and, but your, uh, your, your request was general. And, um, and, uh, but the uh, discussion and you, you turned it very specifically, very quickly. So my, uh, my, my uh, memo simply addresses the fact that in future, if we can find out what the entire intent is uh, for having something on the agenda, everybody will be, both staff and all of council will be on the same uh, playing field. Okay, well, thank you for uh, clarifying that, but uh, if there were questions to the request of the agenda form, there was ample time to even uh, notify me or seek additional information. I read up on legislation because Legislation states that A, uh, this task uh, can be delegated, and we did, and it was delegated years back. So the head and council delegated this uh, freedom of information internally to an employee. And of course, uh, reading up in the local newspaper, there were also comments by one of the elected official saying that he wanted the entire issue of the freedom of information on the agenda. So, you know what? I submitted the request. There was appetite by other members of council to have it on the agenda. It was stated in our local newspaper. And at the end, uh, there was some nuance and it's still not clear in my mind. And I'm trying to understand the entire process. Because like I said, uh, I think the issue stems more with communication and understanding the process. And I'm still not clear after we discussed that subject matter when it came to the legal opinion, was it a legal opinion to identify if the report was required or was it a legal opinion identifying that there was no need to notify members of council? I believe the legal opinion was uh, on uh, notification of the members of council. Melanie? That is correct. Right. Okay. And then with the legislation, your memo doesn't address the issue of the cost because the release of the reports, these reports did not exist. And to generate these reports, there were costs to generate those reports. So who pays for the reports? And would it be the requester that's responsible for- The requester is responsible. I think we answered that, but the, the requester is responsible for paying uh, the cost uh, of, the, of the request. Um, you know, the, uh, the head uh, governs that, um, you know, whether she uh, submitted a bill or not, um, you know, uh, would be a matter for operations and uh, something that would need to be adjusted. But uh, the uh, typically as the legislation uh, points out, and we have uh, as a matter of course, charged uh, or charged um, the build uh, requesters for uh, photocopying and uh, depending on whether it uh, merited, um, uh, depending on the size or when it, whether it merited uh, HR time, then we would look at that as well. But, um, but yeah, that's usually, uh, you know, we have uh, 20 years experience dealing with FOI requests and, uh, and uh, typically that's how it's handled. Okay. Well, thank you because uh, I don't think at our last meeting that um that information uh, was I'm glad uh, I it. Mm -hmm. it wasn't that uh, detailed as uh, what you are identifying right now. So the requester is going to be liable in paying for the two reports that were generated. Okay.
Thank you. So, Conseil Alice, Conseil Chris. Well, I mean, uh, he answered that question, but I would like to know because that report was not done, it had to be redone, and it was quite extensive. I mean, I don't know how many pages of the paper to, to put it there. I, I do have a concern because it went public. It went public, and I think just even if the law, and I don't think, I think we had the right to know, but it would have been just some counselor obviously were advised that they were existing because they commented in the 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 for, on the in the paper and i think the mayor was asked uh, the day before you responded you requested to see if you didn't even know what we were ta we're talking about so the so, fact remains uh, jake and i i don't want to start a debate just say that you said your say on the the memo and at at no point of time, also, I I would like to uh, to say that I think Mel uh, I can commend me. I don't know if she does it because she had to keep her calm and really she, the, the the position she have. So my question to you, Jay, because we're talking about legal fee, they will be responsible. But is anybody can get? legal advice or they have to be channeled through you because at some point of time when we we talk we need to cc you on everything so and we're counselor obviously but is staff you they can can mail or alicia or stefan or uh, sean can call the lawyer they feel like it uh, general question yeah and there are a lot of small questions like that that go to lawyers are not built uh, for us uh you know they're kind of on retainer but general question is no uh, uh staff uh, are not in the habit of uh calling lawyers melanie has a legal position in the municipality and she has uh, a certain amount of leeway uh you know to uh, confirm that her legal positions are accurate, um, she, you know, uh, because the uh, the alternative is worse than uh, not getting advice, huh? and uh, and so you know, I would suggest to you that uh, there isn't anybody that would contact a lawyer uh, directly without uh, going through me, uh, or unless it's a small matter, Melanie, uh, Melanie or Elisa uh, as the assistant uh, CAO. Uh, off, uh, can, but that's usually rare. It usually goes through me. Okay, so just to clarify, so if we get to get angry at somebody, we know that you give permission. No, okay. I think you should get angry at me because I work I'm with you and not uh, not the rest of my staff. That's that's the point, I guess. I'm okay. making. Yeah. Well, the thing is, it's good to clarify that the staff is not yes. really responsible in the matter when it's legal because they got permission from you. They're they're doing their job. So, they are just doing their job. So that's try, why I'm clarifying because at no yeah. point of doubt, and I'm knowing you, I know that they ask you and they, they go through you because they know how you operate. So uh, again, it's just to make sure that Mel is not on the hot seat that there, she was blamed. So I think it's a matter of communication. And I think we have, still have the right to know about it, but that's off the discussion table right now. So let's go to the... Okay. So, are there any questions or comments pertaining to this issue? Conseil Chris? So, I, I just want to say that, uh, generally speaking, I think the FOI, FOI requests and, and the fees, those are kept nominal because you don't want to set up a barrier um, for the public to have uh, uh, access to this information. So, the other thing is, in this particular case, as I raised, that we did not, we're not following the bylaw, and the section of the bylaw that we're not following is the section uh, that allows us to store and hold and own the information of the amphibia request. Um, and because we do not, uh, it's on us that, that we have to pay that money. Thank you. Okay, well, um, there's, well gonna be, there's gonna be clarification that's required because that's not the interpretation of our CEO, and that is not what the legislation states. Section 45 of the Freedom of Information talks about the cost for reports and the FOI coordinator does have flexibility to waive when the fee is minimal. My understanding is this council did not amend the bylaw to ask for more detailed reports because we were specifically told by the IC, if you wish to have more details, you may 
amend your bylaw, but be prepared to pay a little bit more money. And council voted the recommendation of amending the bylaw and to keep it as is. So the question is, Jay, the legislation for providing the reports to the requester, who is liable to pay that fee? You've identified in the it's, past staff resources. Well, as a general rule, well, so that's the question. The first thing I would say is this is a nice, it's a great conversation. I'm not 100% sure that it's actually on the agenda other than my memo, but yeah, okay. So what you indicated is correct. Uh, uh, that, But what I, I think what Councillor Chris is indicating uh, is that uh, that I believe the bylaw as it is written now and not to be amended should have a report back to the CAO uh, on, a, I think, is it a 90 day or a 60 day period? I, I wasn't ready to have a debate because like I say, there's only a resolution to release a document or not. So I don't have everything in front of me. Uh, I wasn't prepared to, um, um, you know, I don't have all of this memorized all of the time, but I believe that our IC uh, uh, indicates that he should be reporting back uh, to me and that discussion was happening and I think the IC said well if I did that it would be a lot more expensive and council said well okay forget it but we didn't amend the bylaw so the bylaw still says that I think he should be coming to me and I think that is the point Chris is making um, it's just to reverse what you're suggesting a little bit that we were amending the bylaw to receive a report I believe it's already in there but I don't have it in front of me yeah, but I think um, maybe if I can clarify um, what Chris was highlighting, not just the mechanism of the report, but the detailed, having more information regarding the actual report providing by the IC, wanting to know the detailed of the complaints, mostly from one elected official towards another elected official, wanted the nuts and bolts of that complaint. And that's where the IC said, I am following the bylaw that you guys have put in place. And yeah. this is the report. But if you want more details, I'd be more than happy to provide you more details. But you need to amend your bylaw. Would that be correct? No, I think what he indicated was exactly what you said, but I think it, uh, I think the one thing he may have missed or, or what have you, and we, we can double check and I can share with council at a later date, but I believe the existing bylaw already uh, provides for providing information on a periodic basis uh, uh, to the, uh, to the CAO. And he doesn't, uh, he doesn't do that. And the reason he says he doesn't do that is because it would cost uh, too much, but um, I think, you know, uh, I, I think the, uh, the point, the only point that uh, Chris was making was that if uh, there'd be less information or less cost from a legal fee, if we, if we would be adhering to our bylaw, because we would already have it. With respect to how uh, other counselors may or may not know, I mean, uh, that reporter would probably be contacting counselors. And so certainly there's no uh, inequity from uh, the staff's part of having shared anything to one counselor counselor and not to others. Um, uh, I know Melanie uh, could confirm right now that she did not. So if uh, the Tribune reporter contacted individual uh, um, uh, counselors, it, it, uh, I'm going to assume it's because their names were in the report and they were asked for a comment, but it certainly wasn't us that shared it. Melanie, you didn't share anything, did you? No. And I don't think the no. question is uh, any accusation that their no. Freedom of Information Coordinator shared their report to some members of council and not the others. I think my main concern was that when there's disclosure that concerns council pertaining to council decision, there should be a mechanism of communication and no need to find out from the outside world when we are part of the corporation and we should be duly informed. And I think that's one of the provision that I made reference to the legislation. And I would just go throughout this process that there'd be some consideration of adopting this process. Conseil Dan. Uh, I just wanted to elaborate and I take exception to Councillor Lee's comment that uh, I had prior knowledge. If you saw the article. No, 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 no don't article. put words in no, my no, mouth. No, 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 it's my, let me speak, please. I take exception to the comment that you made that I had prior knowledge. 
when the reporter called me, she asked, she referenced the, the complaints that were made against me and the complaint that I made against somebody. That was it. And she asked my comments about that. Do not put, do not, I take exception to that because you're inferring that I have information before. I don't want a response from you, man, uh, Councillor Lees. Well, I'm gonna, I got the right to, to okay, respond I mean, to that, just, okay? Just because subject. this is not what I said. I said, you find out if one way, I never said that you had discussion about it. You knew about it. Chris knew about it before we all know. And, and please, please don't try to tell me that it was a big secret because it was not a big secret, okay? So if you, the hat fit that you had prior things on it, well, wear it, but I did not say that. I said, you find out because you did some comment on it. So you knew about it and Chris knew about it. So that's the only thing I said. Thank no, you. I, 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 okay. Madam Chair, I take exception to that because that's take it. outright not true. And the point is, is that when the reporter asked my comments, it was in reference to complaints that were made against me that I was fully aware of and complaints that were made, made by me. So previous information? No, I think I, I take, I, I take exception to that. Are you so, okay with word? You know what? It emphasizes the issue, you know, about communication. Yeah. And I think there is a need for this council when it does affect the council, if there's gonna be information that goes in the public domain, there should be a mechanism to duly inform council. It would avoid all of this type of discussion. And that's part about uh, being in an open, transparent, and making sure that everyone's on the same page. Okay. Go okay. Uh, can I be excused, but I'm not? Yes. Conseil Chris. So I just uh, like basically uh, go back to the beginning here. We, we're, we're kind of public property and uh, there is not a lot we do and document that is not in the public domain. So you should just live and expect that. You know, the next thing will be all the complaints and the responses and those will go in the public domain. We are public animals. We, we, we you know, when we, when we put our names forward to represent the people, uh, we kind of, you know, as horrible as it seems sometimes, but we've got big targets on our back and we just have to live with it. So to my mind, it's all public, thank you. Okay, well, you are entitled to uh, your opinion, and I don't think that we're public animals, and I know that it's an expression. But uh, you know what? Uh, at the same time, when there's going to be public funds and utilization and services uh, that affects members of council, I think that there should be communication. And I would hope that uh, at a later date, if there would be something similar to this nature, that uh, we would have the opportunity to be duly informed, not to debate the decision, but to be duly informed. And I think that's one of the issues that I had questioned pertaining to process. So on that note, Conseil Rowley. Madam Mayor, you're saying about communication, but with this, the way I've seen this council work since the beginning of this mandate, it's, uh, it's all divisiveness. So. You're, you, it doesn't make sense. doesn't make sense. Everybody needs an attitude change. Thank you. Well, you know what? I'm not going to debate the issue about, uh, you know, the working report. Point of order. The, um, the eight yeah. people here. So that's it. Kwasi, Dan, what's your point of order? My point of order is that you've gotten off the topic. You're completely off the topic. And the point is, is that you got your answer from the memo. I think we should move forward. Thank you. The point of order should be uh, directed towards Conseil Rowley for getting off topic and not focusing on the freedom of information. No, the point of order is uh, against so, you. Um, well, the point of order, I was responding to a counselor. You're right. The issue about the working report is not part of the freedom of information. Okay, go for it. So based on that, uh, that covers the memo, but A, wanted to highlight that in no way, shape, or form that it had to do with anything pertaining to the integrity and the professionalism of our Freedom of Information clerk. It had to do with 
having a better comprehension and understanding of the entire process and dealing with requests that involve counsel and communication and fees. Okay. So based, uh, if we follow to line with our agenda, there's two resolutions. And I think uh, the two resolution, one was um, obtaining the documentation pertaining to the legal opinion of uh, not being obliged to share this information to council. And there is a resolution in regards to that. Is there a volunteer as a mover and a seconder? Conseil Yvon, Conseil Elise. It is moved by Councillor Duhane and seconded by Councillor Elise Seneca. We have resolved that the municipal legal opinion received regarding the municipal freedom of information and protection of privacy request be made public. And I have a recorded vote, sorry, forgot to ask. Councillor Duhane? You're on mute, uh, Conseil Yvon. Yes. Councillor Fisher? This is the question of, of just the uh, stuff that you, that, is that what we're talking about? Yeah, no, I don't need that. Thank you. Councillor Larabee? No. Councillor Rovita? No. Councillor Mallette? No. Councillor Denise Senecal? Uh, yes, should be public. Councillor Lee Senecal? Yes. Mayor Joanne Savage? Yes. Defeated. And uh, the other resolution has to do with the actual report that is already in the public domain. And that report uh, has to do with more details than the initial report provided by the IC in September. And that's the one that I was making reference to, even where we have uh, one councillor, Councillor Chris, that said uh, that this should be public and it should even be posted. So the request here for the resolution is uh, for all members of council to receive copy of the report and to entertain how that report will be posted and shared with the public at large. Is there a hmm? volunteer for a mover and a seconder Conseil Lise, Conseil Leo. I recorded also, Madame Mayor. Councillor Duhane. Oh, we better read the resolution. It is moved by Lise, Councillor Lee Senecal and seconded by Councillor Mallette. We have resolved that the report prepared by the Integrity Commissioner in response to the Municipal Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act request be made public. Councillor Duhane. Yes. Councillor Fisher. Yes. Councillor Larabee. Yes, all the nuts and bolts. Everything should be out in the public. Thank you. Councillor Mayer. Yes. Councillor Rita. Yes. Councillor Denise Seneca. Yes. Councillor Lee Seneca. Yes, and all the time up to our term is up. That's the way it should be. I agree. Uh, Councillor Mayor Joanne Savage. Yes. <laughs> And question to Jay, will this be posted and available on our website? Oh, we said yes, that's what we ask. Sure. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have another resolution pertaining to the Ontario Fire College campus in Gravenhurst. Is there a volunteer as a mover and a seconder? Conseil Leo, Conseil Chris. It is moved by Councillor Mallette and seconded by Councillor Fisher. Whereas the Ontario Fire College campus has been in operation in Gravenhurst since 1958, and whereas the Ontario Fire College campus is one of the primary sources for certified training of Ontario firefighters, and whereas the Ontario Fire College campus has built a reputation of integrity, credibility, and reliability in providing some of the best training to fire services within the province of Ontario, and whereas the Ontario Fire College campus has been used to train and certify both volunteer, part-time, and career firefighters throughout Ontario, and whereas the regional training centres are not all created equal and similar in function to the Ontario Fire College campus, and whereas the Ontario Fire College campus gives Ontario firefighters another option 
than regional training centers to obtain National Fire Protection Association, NFPA certifications. And whereas the Ontario Fire College campus is the most cost-effective method for municipalities to certify fire firefighters to NFPA standards in Ontario. And whereas the Ontario government enacted and, e and revoked Ontario Regulation 379-18 firefighter certification in 2018, and whereas the Ontario government revoked Ontario Regulation 379-18 firefighter certification. It was made known by the Office of the Solicitor General that the Act would be amended and brought back in the future. And therefore be it resolved that the West Nipissing Municipality requests the province of Ontario reverse the decision to close the Ontario Fire College campus in Gravenhurst as the OFCS is one of the best and most cost-effective methods for municipalities to train their firefighters, which assists in protecting residents. And be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be forwarded to the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, the Honourable Sylvia Jones, Ontario Solicitor General, the Honourable Steve Clark, Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, the Ontario Fire Marshal, John Pegg, and all municipalities within the province of Ontario. Okay, thank you. Before um, uh, going to the floor for questions or comments, I see that our Fire Chief uh, is amongst us. And this had been deferred, I believe, from the meeting of um, the first meeting of March. So, Chief, did you have uh, any information that you wanted to highlight to bring to Council's uh, attention? Through you, Mrs. Mayor, um, I uh, sent you a brief uh, note uh, about uh, the announcements. And... Um, just for a summary, January 13th, uh, the Office of the Fire Marshal announced the closure of the Ontario Fire College campus. Um, we, uh, I, we are uh, part of the uh, Association of, uh, uh, Ontario Association of Fire Chiefs, and um, supposedly uh, the, uh, the Fire Marshal's office, uh, or actually the province of Ontario, Solicitor General uh, actually um, uh, mentioned that uh, they had consultations with a few organizations, which included the Ontario Association of Fire Chief. But um, we uh, we had a meeting uh, with the uh, the executive of uh, the association, and they they actually uh, mentioned that they had never uh, heard anything prior to the announcement. Um, Therefore, uh, they had numerous uh, uh, meetings with both the Solicitor General and um, the Ontario Fire Marshal. And um, they, uh, on January 26th, they sent us a letter uh, saying that they had met with uh, both, uh, uh, both parties. And, um, and then on February 17th, they actually, uh, um, did a WebEx and uh, included, uh, I believe we were 375 chiefs on the WebEx. And um, they, uh, at that time, they uh, informed us that they, they had heard that uh, there was a, um, a petition uh, going towards the uh, um, Solicitor General and the Office of the Fire Marshal uh, to try and reverse the decision. Um, the thing is, is that the petition seemed to, uh, to have started with the uh, employees uh, that worked at the fire college, like uh, the union of the, uh, the employees. Um, and uh, at that time, they, uh, after they had our few, the few meetings with uh, both uh, parties of the government, um, they, uh, they really uh, found out that the the um, uh, both Solicitor General and the Office of the Fire Marshal would not reverse their decision. Um, they uh, they have uh, selected uh, uh, twenty. They they started with twenty sites for regional fire training center um, within the province to try and make it easier for uh, the different departments uh, to be able to travel to these places. Um, Luckily, uh, I, uh, I've been talking with uh, Nord Bay Fire and uh, they will have a training, uh, a 
regional training center there. Uh, they're actually working on it with Canador College. Um, so um, at that time, the association, the fire chief uh, said that uh, they would not uh, spend any resources trying to get that decision reversed, but instead tried to work with the uh, both uh, parties to uh, make it easier for uh, fire departments or municipal fire departments to uh, get access to training and uh, facilities and uh, trying to make it as uh, affordable as possible for, uh, for the municipalities. Um, the, the courses that uh, the fire college was uh, delivering uh, cost $65 per course per uh, firefighter. That, was, that included the uh, lodging and, uh, and the food. Uh, so uh, complete our accommodation throughout the, uh, the course. Um, unfortunately, all their courses were during the week, making it very hard for a volunteer firefighter to be able to attend to these courses. Um, just want to let you know that uh, the, uh, the training we're given our firefighters here in West Nipissing uh, is the same curriculum that the Ontario Fire College is delivering right now. Uh, the only uh, diff big difference is that we don't have the facility to do the hands-on training. So we basically make shift our uh, hands-on training. Uh, the uh, brighter side of the story of uh, the, whole, uh, the whole thing here is that um, with the regional training center in North Bay, um, we've been in contact with both the chief and the uh, training officer and they they were saying that they were going to be working really really hard to try to accom uh, accommodate us uh, and uh, meaning that um, they, they would make the training center available to us uh, on weekends or uh, whatever we uh, we would be able to uh, to attend with uh, some firefighters to do the hands-on um, the instructors at the fire college uh, are still going to be employed um, they'll, they'll be uh, working on the uh, different uh, uh, training development. Uh, you know, uh, they'll be, uh, the fire college itself is not closing. Uh, it's just a campus. Um, the um, registration, they'll take care of all the registrations. Uh, I'm uh, actually uh, in the works to trying to make, uh, uh, what they call it, uh, a learning contract with the uh, fire college to, uh, for them to supply us with uh, the different documents and uh, the uh, curriculum that uh, the uh, that we're lacking uh, part of, and um, so uh, and then uh, they'll have uh, adjunct uh, instructors coming to uh, evaluate our firefighters at the training centers and uh, actually uh, certifying our firefighters uh, to the NFPA standard. Um, now, uh, because of, uh, of, uh, the, uh, both parties from the government, uh, stating that they, they would not re uh, reverse their decision and try to work, uh, with the, uh, municipalities to, uh, accommodate, um, after I've written this, uh, this memo, some sort of a memo for you, um, I received an email from the uh, office of the fire marshal saying that uh, they had uh, received $5 million uh, um, to support uh, fire training and fire prevention. And uh, they actually uh, uh, told us that uh, uh, the 485 plus uh, municipal fire departments uh, would be entitled to a minimum of uh, $4,500 grant towards uh, both fire training and uh, tra and uh, fire prevention. Um, on the email that I received uh, directly from the fire marshal's office, uh, uh, they're sta stating that uh, we're going to be getting $8,100 um, if we, uh, so right now I'm working on uh, submitting the application for uh, that amount uh, that would uh, uh, help us uh, with different uh, software module, uh, textbooks uh, for the training. Um, we're going to uh, be looking at the, 
a software for our fire prevention to be able to uh, uh, keep better records. And uh, so uh, we'll be uh, ut utilizing uh, this, um, uh, this grant as much as we can. Um, so basically, uh, you know, at this time, uh, I don't think uh, a resolution from council will uh, change the, the decision from um, the, the government of Ontario to closing the campus. Unfortunately, um, the, uh, the, our, our, the only firefighters from uh, the municipality here that went to the fire college uh, were basically uh, the full times because of uh, their collective agreement. Uh, they had to uh, certify at fire officer two to be able to uh, become uh, first class firefighters. So uh, they, they needed um, the uh, courses that were delivered at the uh, Ontario Fire College campus. Okay. And other than that, uh, the volunteers, uh, uh, it wasn't geared uh, to uh, our selection of volunteers. Okay. Okay, Chief. So summarizing all that is that uh, the fire college is already closed. It's uh, closing on the 31st of uh, March, but it's been closed since uh, last March on account of COVID. That's right. And yeah. then um, even though there's advocacy in adopting the resolution, it may not change the powers of authority to revert their decision. And then there's an opportunity to tap into a grant, which is for fire training, fire prevention. I guess the question to you, Chief, um, it may not influence the decision of the government to revert their decision regarding the fire college, but do you recommend that we still endorse the resolution and hope for the best along with other municipalities that have done so? Well, it's going to be up to the up to council uh, to do so. Uh, okay. If you do uh, uh, do go through with the resolution, maybe they'll push the government to uh, give us more grants uh, down the line. Uh, okay. Um, you know, uh, right now uh, they they've come up with this uh, five million dollars uh, one time shot. Um, okay. Hopefully, they'll uh, come back uh, later on uh, with some more. Okay. So are there any questions pertaining to the resolution that our clerk has read, Conseil Denis? Yes, I'm kind of confused. Are we supposed to, if they have the, uh, the training in North Bay, wouldn't that be less expensive for us? Why would we send a resolution? I'm not clear. On that. Well, the understanding from the memo is that training would be more expensive. Is that correct, Chief? Uh, see, the, the cost to send a firefighter at the Ontario Fire College was $65 for the entire course. Uh, like uh, for a, fire, a volunteer firefighter would have to take firefighter one. It would cost $65 for 10 days stay at the fire college. He would be uh, lodged and uh, fed there at that price. Now, uh, at the um, North Bay uh, Training Center, it might cost us the, the price of uh, the adjunct uh, uh, instructor to be able to sign them off. Uh, like, we're going to have to pay him uh, a, a day's work. And then um, the, the meals for the firefighters attending. And uh, so there'll be a... a a little, uh, it will be more expensive than $65 a firefighter because yeah. we still have to pay the $65 to the college for them to register for the course. Oh, I see. Okay. Thank you for that. You okay. Conseilis? Yes. And a trainer for a day uh, would cost uh, between uh, up to maybe $5,000 a day, depending what kind of expertise that they need to do. A uh, regular trainer for the goes between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars a day. No, there's and, uh, there quite a word. Professor curfew. Can we just move on and, and vote on it? Um, you yeah. know what? Um, we're just getting clarification of what's being provided out of uh, courtesy to our fire chief. Vote on the resolution, and then we're going to adopt the resolution to move forward after curfew. If you're fine with that, Conseil Leo. Proceed, Chief. We can. We yeah, yeah. The the instructors are still going to be subsidized by the the uh, Ontario Fire College. 
so the, we won't be paying a, the, the full salary of the instructor. So uh, it's still going to be $65 plus uh, an amount, but uh, like it won't be $5,000 for the instructor. Okay. So I think it clarifies, quantifies the issue. Are we uh, okay to proceed uh, regarding the resolution that was provided? So are there any objections to the resolution? No. I see no objection, therefore it's carried, it's adopted. Thank you, Chief, for the memo and thank you for the detailed explanation. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Now we need a mover and a seconder to be able to extend our curfew. Is there a volunteer? Conseiller Yvon? If I don't have a volunteer to extend the curfew, it means uh, there's no resolution. Okay. So this means uh, by not having a resolution to uh, proceed with the agenda, uh, we are not extending the meeting, the curfew, to discuss those subject matters. So. I still need a volunteer as a mover and a seconder to be able to adjourn the meeting. Conseil Lise, Conseil Leo. It is moved by Councillor Manet and seconded by Councillor Lee Senecal. It resolved the bylaw number 2021-20 being a bylaw of 2021-21. No 20. <laughs> What year is this? 2021-21 being a bylaw of the West Nipissing Municipality to confirm the proceeding of council at its meeting held on the 16th day of March, 2021, shall come into force and take effect on the day it is passed. Any objections? Carried, a deputy. It is moved by Councillor Lee Senecal and seconded by Councillor Leo Manette. Be it resolved that the meeting of council held on March the 16th, 2021 be adjourned. Any objections? Terry, adopté. This concludes our council meeting for this evening. Ceci conclut notre réunion ce soir. Thank you. Good evening.